Hello, 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 and welcome to a Sunday night live stream. Nice to see you all. My name is Natalie. I'm a public defender, criminal defense attorney. Um, happy weekend, everybody. We're about to move into Monday. So it's time for us to look at something that is not someone dying, that is not someone <laughs> being abused, right? It's not uh, kids being hurt or anything like that. It's just sovereign citizen nonsense, okay? And if sovereign citizens don't help they themselves, at least they help us to decompress with all of their foolishness. Hello, Seattle. Hello. Happy Sunday, everybody. Cheers to all of you. Cheers to the freaking weekend, as our girl Rihanna says. Mm. And Jazz is in here and she's looking out the window. So that means at some point in time, she's going to be barking and I'm going to have to kick her out. But for right now, I mean, I could close the curtains, but I like the little bit of light that I have left. Hello, guys, please. Oops, let me just uh, clean that up. Please make sure that you like the video. OK, be sure to do that. Like the video. Um, please make sure that you take your shoes off, get comfortable, sit back, relax, grab, grab, grab your glass of wine, your um, hot cocoa. It's hot cocoa weather right here in the D.C. area, Prince George's County, Maryland. Um, cup of tea, if that's what you're feeling, some water if you need to be hydrated. Once again, I don't have my water in here. I'm probably going to go get it at some point in time because I really need to stop doing that. Hello, South Carolina. Hello, coastal North Carolina. It's nice to see all of you. I love you guys telling me where you're coming from. And as we got started off, Naughty Aries has already um, gifted 10 Natalie Lawyer Chick memberships. Thank you so much, Naughty Aries. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you to everyone who's here. It is um, very nice to see all of you. Thank you for complimenting the color of my dress. This dress is from like an online boutique from the UK. I'll put in the description box where I got it from. Hello, Ohio. Hello, Massachusetts. Good old New England area there in Massachusetts. Yeah, a tea right now would actually be awesome. Maybe I'll start tomorrow's stream with the tea. Um, so just so you guys know, I'm going to have, I'm going to be filming some stuff which is why I'm kind of a little bit dressed up right now. I'm going to be filming some stuff when this live stream is done so you guys can have some things for the coming week. There's also a few more shorts that I need to put up. I just, I was put on notice that you don't put all the shorts up in one day, okay? You have to, you know, spread them out. So <laughs> I put up some shorts today, a tea cap today. You guys should go and check those out if you haven't already seen them. Yes, so... Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so I'm going to pre-film some stuff for you guys because I'm starting trial on Tuesday. And you know, when I'm starting trial, that means I can't be here with you guys because you get like that trial hangover. Hello, Canada. Oh my goodness. Hello, Scotland. Wow, you possibly are the furthest away. Sometimes we get people in here from Australia, but I think Scotland would be pretty far. Hello. Hello. Hello, Massachusetts. Hello, New York. Redding, California. Nice to see you guys. Cottage Grove, Oregon. Oh, lovely. I've been to Washington State, but I've never been to the state of Oregon. So I need to um, go on out there. 308 of you are here right now. That's great. Please make sure that you like the video. That way everybody can know that we're here. 
There are 137 likes, 311 concurrent viewers. If we can get the likes up to 311, that means that we're going to be able to have a lot of people in this stream and it's going to be a good old time. It's going to be a good old time. Okay. All right. Um, so let's get started with our icebreaker before we get into our sovereign citizen foolishness. That way it can give everybody a chance to get in here. And also you guys have made it very, very clear to me. Okay. You like the icebreakers and do not take down the live streams just to put up a T-cap. And I got you, okay? What you want, that's what I'm going to do. There's some things I do that's just for me. Like, I, this is just what I want to do, so I'm going to do it. But there's some, like, direction that you give me, and I'm just like, okay, I'm going to listen. Because <laughs> I'm pretty hard-headed, but I'm going to listen. <laughs> I'm a very stubborn person. Oh, my goodness, it's a mess. All right, so let's get to the icebreaker. Oh, yeah. And here's another thing. Can you guys please um, do me a favor and let me know when we start the reaction video, whether or not I'm echoing because I'm trying something new. You see, I got new headphones in and these headphones go into the focus, right? Which is like the thing that the mic plugs into and that's where the audio is coming from. And then, and I can like hear myself in it. Like I can tell if I'm loud or, or soft or whatever. And usually it would be plugged into the computer and I wouldn't be able to hear myself, but I can hear the video that I'm reacting to. I did a test run of it earlier today with like a private video. And by having it plugged into the focus, right, I did not hear an echo in the actual stream, but you may hear an echo. And so if you hear an echo, please let me know if you hear an echo. <laughs> that way um, I can switch the audio to coming directly from the computer, but I do have on, let me just make sure I have on echo cancellation. Hold on. Audio. I have on echo cancellation. I cannot put it in stereo audio because if I put in stereo audio, it'll only go into one of your guys' ears. So right now there's no echo, but it's when I start reacting and playing the video. If there's an echo, then you got to let me know. Okay. Just put echo, 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 and then I'll know to change it around. Okay. All right. Um, take a shot every time Natalie says echo. Well, then you would be quite intoxicated by now. <laughs> Wait, let me put my hair right there. Whenever I'm wearing something on stream, that's like a little, you know, I put it like this. I'm a grown ass woman, right? I'm almost 40 years old. Okay. And I got the shape of a grown woman. <laughs> and a lot of the times that's distracting to people. So I, I try to like, you know, keep it up, you know, covered up. And so sometimes it's not always possible with what I'm wearing, even though I try not to wear anything too risque here. But whenever anything is like, you know, wanting to poke out a bit, the hair does come in handy. Okay. <laughs> so that's what's going on <laughs> right now. I got like a little hair scarf going on because this is for my husband. It's not for y'all. <laughs> mm. All right, let's keep it going. This one I thought was very interesting. Um, AITA. AITA stands for am I the a-hole? Am I the a-hole for calling the police when the parents I babysit for were late? I, a 16-year-old female, sometimes babysit on the weekends. My mom's coworker needed a babysitter and she gave him my number. I agreed to babysit three kids from 2 p.m. till 8.30 p.m. Because the parents had some party to get to. It went okay, but the parents didn't get back at 8.30. At 9, I tried calling him, but he didn't pick up. I texted a few times. At 9.30, I tried calling again. And again at 10 and 1030, I tried calling my parents, but my dad was at work dinner and my mom didn't pick up. I tried calling the parents of the kids again, but they still weren't picking up or responding. At 1130 ish, I called the police because I didn't know what else to do. And I was worried something might have happened to the parents, too. They came and around the same time the parents came back. The dad screamed at me and he's still very upset. Edit. I called the police because I was worried about the parents not picking up slash being late and because I really had to go home, not to involve CPS or anything like that. 
Edit two. Since some people asked, I didn't call the emergency number. I'm not in the U.S. Police isn't violent here. And I was paid up front. So not for the extra three hours. Okay, so right now I'm not looking at your guys' comments, but go ahead and share your thoughts in the comment section down below, and then we're going to put up a poll. I will eventually look at your comments, but let me just give you my unvarnished opinion. And my unvarnished opinion is that this 16-year-old is not the a-hole. And the reason I say that is because, first of all, she's 16. She's 16, so already, you know, it's, it, it, she's not equipped to deal with an emergency situation for her to call the police, the non-emergency number for the police is certainly, you know, uh, like you should predict that if you give a child your children to take care of, which is, you know, there's nothing wrong with having a teenager babysit your kids, but they're still a child and they call an authority figure that should not surprise you. And also she could be concerned that you guys are dead in a ditch somewhere and then say they were like in a car accident on the side of the road in a ditch and she didn't call the authorities and she just called her parents and her parents came and got her or whatever. They waited till the morning and then the people died or froze to death or whatever the case may be. Everybody would be blaming her saying, why didn't you call the police? You know, obviously something was wrong. Nobody would leave their kids unattended for three hours without calling to check in. I think that the parents here that hire the babysitter are completely in the wrong because they should have responded to her and said, we're OK. We are caught up. We need a designated driver, whatever the case may be. And we're delayed in getting home. But I think that they were purposefully ignoring her because they were having such a good time. And they probably thought, oh, we'll just pay her for the extra hours when we get back. And they didn't want to hear the grief about them being out late. Like, I just feel like it's very disrespectful to people's time. And just because she's 16 doesn't mean she didn't have things to do. And if I was the 16-year-old's mother, I wouldn't want her at your house till 1030, 1130 at night is when they came home. At 1130, she called the police. And it was after that that they showed up and the police showed up around the same time. So they were supposed to be done. She had the kids from 2 to 8.30. They were supposed to be back at 8.30. They didn't come back until after 11.30. That's absolutely ridiculous. The parents are totally in the wrong here. I can't conceive of a scenario in which you know, she was wrong for contacting the authorities because it, even if she had been my child and she called me and said, mom, it's 1130 and they're still not back, I would have been like, girl, call the police because something is wrong because who would leave their kids for three hours without telling the babysitter where they are. You know, like even I have friends that leave their kids with babysitters. They'll check in with the babysitter during the designated time, not stay three hours longer and not check in with the babysitter. What if she did something to your kids? You know, that's that's wild. What if she was calling them because something was wrong with the kids? Like, you know, one of the kids got sick or had an allergic reaction or need to go to the hospital and you're not responding. So it's just like, that's crazy to me. Like they were probably passed out. Now that I really think about it, they were probably drunk, passed out, you know, and not monitoring their phones. I, I don't want to believe that they're bad parents, but for them to be, this was a bad parenting moment. And for them to be upset with the babysitter for calling the police when that was the responsible thing to do, they are definitely the a-holes. All right, let me see what you guys think. All right. Oh, agreed. Poor girl. The parents suck. Um, not the not us, all U.S., and also didn't say what country, I think. So I can't say that might be a reasonable thing to contact authorities where they live. I just feel like it's reason. I feel like even though like, yes, then. OK, so there's like an undercurrent here, probably in the comments section, why she had that edit. Um, There's an undercurrent here where of cur of curse, undercurrent of curse, <laughs> of course, People are concerned about the response of law enforcement because they're concerned that if law enforcement gets involved, somebody could get shot. That happens around here. Police respond for like something regular and then somebody ends up getting shot or the kids end up getting taken away by CPS or something like that. Like those types of things do happen. Right. And of course, that's not what we want, you know, at all. Uh, but honestly, we even it, even in the U.S., Think about all the times where it's like these true crime stories and it's like, oh, nobody heard from them. And then they were dead somewhere like in a basement or something like that. And then everybody's like, why didn't somebody call the police? If someone had called the police, they could have been looking for them sooner. So really that like you, you go 
uncommunicative for your kids for 9, 10, 11, 30, three hours, three hours, you're not communicating about your kids. I'm going to be concerned that you're kidnapped or dead or something like that. And you know what? And, and, and generally, Tyler, you're making a, you're making a, a very, you know, there's people in here that are making good points about, you know, just being cautious about calling the police. You don't want CPS to get involved in necessarily all those type of things. I get that. I totally get that. Right. I'm just saying that you just don't want to be the person, in the true crime documentary who didn't call the police. <laughs> I feel like there's some, there's certain points in time where like, OK, now we call the police. Right. It's been three hours and she tried to communicate with them. That's wild. That's wild to me. Mm. I don't know if I should tell you guys what I'm drinking, but this I'm not usually I'm not usually a sweet wine person, but this is really good. It's called Chocolate Shop and it's probably like not very highbrow, but it's really good and I'm like, like I said I'm not a sweet wine person, but it's like red wine mixed with chocolate. It's really good. Highly recommend. There's probably like other brands that have that going on, but that's really not something I can be drinking a lot because I have to watch my sugar intake because your girl tends to like to put on the weight. <laughs> what if there was an emergency with the kids? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, daycare centers would call the police. That is such a good point. I mean, that they definitely would. Or there's been ones that have gotten in trouble for just like putting the kids out and stuff. So yeah. If you need an overnight babysitter, get an overnight babysitter. Yeah. Isn't there like Rover for kids? <laughs> I'm not a parent. I'm not a biological parent. So excuse my ignorance. But is there that like there's an app for that, isn't there? Because there's like Rover. If we need to be away, you know, for more than a day or two, we get a Rover sitter to come and watch jazz um, or we send her you know, we'll send her with like friends or something like that. But like, if they, if they're not able to, we'll get a Rover sitter to watch her. So I'm sure there's like that for kids with like vetted people that can watch your kids overnight. I would never babysit for them again. So messed up. How dare they do that? Okay. You're late. Then answer the phone. Exactly. But I, I was at first, I was like, are they afraid of being told off? But then I said, you know what it is? They was drunk <laughs> or, or getting it in. They were doing something. They were doing something. Um, the parents had the nerve to yell at her. Why weren't the parents answering? What if there was an emergency with their kids? Exactly. Um, if they were having a great time, they should have let her know they'd be late. Absolutely. If your kids are with a babysitter, you should one, get back at the agreed time and two, always be reachable. Three, offer an emergency alternative contact in case you don't have signal. And four, do not scream at anyone. Historical cheesecake, you know, hopefully one day I'm a parent myself and I'll be able to put those things, you know, in action. But those are all great pointers. Why didn't they have a backup number? You know, all of that is really, really smart. Thank you. NTA, the parents should have good communication with the child's minder. I would have been on the phone instantly if the minder called me. My thinking would be, uh-oh, what did they burn down? Right, right. It could have been anything. It could have been anything. Hey, somebody just came in and snatched your kids. And they're just like, you know, <laughs> every day we're shuffling. Like they're just like turning up in the club <laughs> and their kids are missing. Like you just don't know. You don't know. That's wild. Yeah. What did historical cheesecake say? That was on the money. Oh, I think it was the pointers that I pointed out. Okay. All right. So let's see what you guys think about this. Let's start H a um poll. Who's the a-hole? The writer the parents okay tell me what you guys think I love reading your guys's comments oh wow 583 of you are here that's awesome thank you so so much I appreciate you um please uh like the video so far, 273 of you have liked the video. So if all 584 of you could like the video, that would be great. All right, let's move on to the main topic. Let's move on to the reaction.
I always make the kids an option. Those poor innocent children. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> um, okay, so if you can't see the poll, that might be what you're based on what you're watching from. Option one is uh, the writer. So if you believe the writer is the a-hole, put number one. Option two is the parents. Option three is the kids because I'm trolling. All right. Yeah, I think the poll issue is a YouTube issue. It's not on this end. Ooh, oops, 608 of you are here. Hello to all 608 of you. It's nice to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kurt. I appreciate that. Y'all, Kurt is my friend. Hello, Uncivil Law. Go subscribe to Uncivil Law if you want amazing legal analysis. Um, your stuff on Take Care of Maya was very good. On the Take Care of Maya appeals, I was watching that. It was very, very good. Um, okay, so prosecutor and judge. This is from Old Squishy Gardeners. What is the full name? Old, oh shit. Who's calling me? I don't know where my phone is. Oh, okay. Hey, babe, one second. Okay. All right. Um, guys, one second, I'm going to go. Jazz started up. Like I said, she would just, just hold on one second. Girl. All right. One second. Hokily dokily. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for understanding. <laughs> My husband's out right now. So that means, you know, it's just me and Jazz and Susie in here. And when she can see out the window, she's barking. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's go. Oh, thanks, honey. All right. Oh, here we go. Old squishy gardeners court watch. I, I always say old squishy gardeners um, channel. Of things to be shared. It's old squishy gardeners court watch. All right, so I'm sharing this. Let's just make sure we're in the right place. All right, the court will call the case of the state of Michigan versus Eric Martin, case number twenty three s zero zero four two five. Rachel McDuffie for the people. And um, standby counsel, Assistant Public Defender Jay Bellinger um, from. Mr. Eric Martin, who appears via Zoom. Mr. Martin, can you please um, unmute and state your name for the record? Shout out to the public defender. Oh, he's gone. I am a living man, capital E, lowercase r-i-c, of the capital M, lowercase a-r-t-i-n family. Um, one of the people, sovereign, not the legal fiction corporate entity defendant with the name similar to mine. I'm here by special appearance to threaten duress, not willingly. Um, 
he's covering all the sovereign citizen bases. He is <laughs> the legal man, the living man. He's here under duress. This is only a special appearance. This, like, as um, Old Squishy says, this is word salad. Um, and it, I've explained in multiple videos, like, what they are actually trying to get at. But it's all, let's suffice it to say that none of it has any legal significance whatsoever. Now, again, I object again to any attorney uh, being appointed to me, representing me. But that's something I want to ask you, Rasha. Now, you said you're appointing this public defender. Are you appointing it for me or are you appointing it for you? Or why, why would anyone else but you need a public defender in there? Sir, I'm going to make my decision on that. It's stand by counsel. If you have motions to make, you need to make those at this time. Yeah, that's, well, that's how I need I'm seeking clarification. Oh, that's Are another you... one. They seek clarification instead of actually making motions. So the public defender there is at standby, standby counsel. So that means that he's not actually retained uh, for the defendant, Mr. Martin. Uh, that instead he's there if Mr. Martin has any questions or anything like that because he's refused rep representation. Funnily enough, in Maryland, the public defender statute. So we are the public defender in Maryland authority comes from an actual statute in the law and in our statute it says that we cannot be forced to be standby counsel so that was one good thing that the litigation department of our um of our organization was able to negotiate that we will not be forced to be standby counsel for people who don't want us you appointing him against my will no. have an attorney appointed for me yes it's not representing you he's standby counsel yes. please make your motions yeah, that's it. Well, that's, well, that's how I was going to make the motion to dismiss him if, if you. I'm sending you a link uh, right now. If you're trying to point him for me, which, as I already said before, I, I will not be taking no attorneys. I'm one of the people. I'm not a, a defendant who's, yeah. So oh, as I said sure. before, so I'm not going to be accepting any attorneys. He's going to fraudulently assume I'm a defendant, and uh, which would then fraudulently uh, give the presumption I'm under the jurisdiction of the court which I'm not, as I said before. Um, so you got five minutes to make your arguments and you can spend them however you want to. All right. I love how calm the judge is here and I love the time limit. Uh, Kurt, I just shot it to you on Twitter. I love the time limit here. It makes me so happy <laughs> because she's not going to suffer under his foolishness forever and ever in a day. Amen. Right. You have five minutes to make your arguments, whatever those arguments may be. <laughs> make good use of that time. Um, he's trying to dismiss his case because the public defender is there. Standby counsel. Standby counsel, they're not representing you. They're just there to make use of if you want to ask them questions. And if you want to decide, never mind, I actually want somebody to represent me, they can then uh, jump in. So they're observing, they give advice, but they're not actively representing you. So that wouldn't be a basis to dismiss the case. In fact, it's an extra protection for you that he does not deserve. Yeah. Like I said before, uh... I'm a living man, so as the U.S. Supreme Court said in the cases I cited to you before, um, there's no jurisdiction over a living man. Corporations don't have jurisdiction over a living man without our consent. I don't consent. <laughs> hey, Kurt, everybody welcome on Civil Law. <laughs> I don't remember that Supreme Court case. I have to be honest. Mm -mm. I thought I, I was pretty well educated on the Supreme Court, but that would miss me. Yeah, you're like a constitutional scholar, but you're like, what case is that? <laughs> Love it. Let's keep it going. <laughs> it's also under, uh, there's no consent under the Declaration of Independence of 1776. The, like there's any other Declaration of Independence of any other year in the United States? Um, yeah, I just, I do want to point out, Sovereign citizens like to make this big thing about consent. I don't consent to this. I don't consent to that. Sir, you do not. <laughs> and it's a coercive system. It does not require your consent. There's no jurisdiction over a human without their consent. So I never consented jurisdiction, and I don't know, and I never will. Oh. Uh, <laughs> now I have some uh, questions, though, for the prosecutor. Uh -huh. Sir, you don't get to ask questions. No. If you want to have a motion, you can make those. 
Do I object to that? That violates my right to a due process. Uh, it's relevant really to doesn't. a standing argument as to the prosecutor, whether they have standing or not. I think that's relevant to move forward or not. You know, there's no standing should move forward, but. You can make a motion. Uh, Kurt, can you explain in layman's terms why one party does not get to ask the prosecution questions or why the defense doesn't get to ask the prosecution questions in court? Yeah, because they're not a witness is the simple answer. Right? You get to ask mm -hmm. questions of witnesses and you get to ask questions of the court through motions and filings. And yeah, you don't, they're not a witness. So there's that. Right. <laughs> it's like it's hard to uh, put into words because it's such a simple concept and everything they do is so divorced from reality, but it really has to be stated. Like you don't get to just cross examine the prosecutor. They are an advocate for the prosecution for the state, but they're not a witness uh, to the case. Mm. I love the silence. So what's your ruling on that? There is no motion. Your motion is denied as to jurisdiction and standing. Now, do you have any additional motions? I object to that because you, you didn't uh, you didn't allow me to answer the questions to see whether you know whether you had a legit basis to make that ruling. She knows. Your objection she, is noted. Next. Next. She doesn't need anything from you. Okay. Um. Let's see here. If I ever become a judge, I'm so going to have a big sign. About the, uh, some demands that made yeah. this Mr. Case anyway, Do soft right? sit, get contempt. Sorry, what? You said you're going to be addressing some demands for dismissal I made, I already sent to, the, uh, to you already. So you're first be... of all, a demand is not a proper format before a court and could be dismissed outright. However, I'm going to allow you to make your motions here. If you want to make an argument, you can do that, sir. I object to that. That's not true. As I mentioned before, demands when someone has you object to you having filed something improperly, a demand, which is not a rec uh, recognized, um, yeah. you know, mechanism for the court to act on in this case. And the judge says, instead of me just dismissing your demand and denying it outright, I will treat it as a motion. Now make your motion on the record. And he objects to her allowing him to make his motion on the record. <laughs> Yeah, He's and especially him. with especially with pro se, it's not uncommon for judges to try to charitably inter interpret what you meant to say. Right. Because they're going to try to help you out a little bit, although he's not exactly helping himself out with the soft sip stuff. Right. Makes you less inclined to help him out. Right, exactly. And he doesn't recognize, he's so far afield in the sovereign citizen nonsense, he doesn't recognize that the court is helping him by saying, go ahead, make your motion now. It's not properly filed. It's probably untimely, but make your motion so I can actually consider it. Oh, Lord. Right. That's what the terminology uh, demand is made. And, that, and that's the only reason why I make it. Um, motions, even though I know that's that's all you see in the court rules or whatever, traditional. The court rules or whatever. <laughs> no biggie. <laughs> um, Just the court rules. That's for a request. And persons are not, or humans are not supposed to be requesting constitutional rights wait 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 no you know, wait, me, wait a second. okay i'm and pausing I... i'm pausing go 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 well i was i was thinking didn't he earlier say that no human being has any right over any other human being without their consent so right. why does he get to file a demand against the prosecutor who is a person when she hasn't given consent how does that work that's a really good question. But to him, the prosecutor is not a person. The pers the prosecutor is like a corporate entity. <laughs> right? Aren't they? Like the state is like a corporate entity. It's not a person. Oh, my God. Only he's a person, really. When it comes to sovereign citizens, only that particular sovereign citizens citizen has rights over everyone else. Okay. <laughs> Unalienable rights. Mm, there you go. Right human rights and constitutional rights i'm supposed to be making demands that's how i've been you know uh, that's backed up by law and that's how i've been taught taught by no. who who taught this and the idea that humans don't make requests is just like completely against our societal norms like we don't just make demands for the like good manners is asking for something instead of demanding it so i don't remember i don't remember for example demanding to be on your stream 
Right. <laughs> Quite politely, might I add. Excellent manners. <laughs> and uh, so that's why, you know, so it, it's all right and proper. Motions are requests, you know. Um, and the defendant makes motions also, since I'm just. So you're about the end of your five minutes. Oh, I love it. Well, I object to yeah. five minutes being any time limit also. I, I, don't, I don't care about what you're objecting to. You can oh! on the record. It is noted. Now, if you have. Tell him, Judge. I'm going back. I love it. Yeah. Hi. It's such a rarity for judges to be like, I don't care. So, <laughs> you know, because they try to be as <laughs> professional and, you know, I don't know, academic I, or, you know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know why, man. I want to go back old school. I want to break up the stockades, man. I know you do. Make them sit on make them sit on Main Street in the stockades from dawn <laughs> till dusk. <laughs> there was there was a one case I was I was reviewing on here, reacting to. I don't remember. It wasn't Cyber Citizen. It was just something completely heinous. And I was like, why are we even bothering with this with this guy? Just it was, it put him in the town square and t throw tomatoes at him. I'm so tired of him. <laughs> I think it was Daryl yeah. Brooks. I was like, throw tomatoes at him. He wasn't something. It's, on, it's not unconstitutional. Bring the stockade back. <laughs> and tomato throwing. I mean, sure. that's not that's not prohibited. <laughs> Defendant makes motions also. Since I'm just so you're about, about the end of your five minutes. Tell him, Judge. Well, I objected five minutes being any time limit also. I, I, don't, I don't care about what you're objecting to. You can make it on the record. It is noted. Now, if you have something that you want me to address, you should do that before your time is up. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Putting a limit on my First Amendment right, that's unconstitutional. Sir, this it. is... Sorry, mm -mm, please. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. The First Amendment is completely preempted in the courtroom, right? Pretty much. <laughs> you know, it's just one of the one of the few forums in which it's it's uh, you know, the judge gets the say in, you know, your speech and things like that. So, cuz they get the the right to conduct the courtroom and the way in which the manner in which things are conducted in the courtroom. They can put time limits, they can do all of that stuff, they can hold you in contempt for not listening to them. For the first amendment is curtailed. Curtailed. I have something to say other than the circular talk that you're doing, Ooh. you should probably do that at this time. Tell him. Let him finish. That's why I didn't mean to. No, no mute, mute him. I didn't, I didn't finish the first time. All right. Well, that's it. As to that, uh... great. Thanks. All right. Anything else? Is the court ready for the people's response to run? <laughs> I, I don't know if he's done with his. Motion. Oh, I'm sorry. So I'm trying to make. <laughs> It's so much word salad. She's just waiting for him to stop talking so she can do what she has to do. Well, the police, I want to question uh, the police officer who wrote the ticket. I have a relevant question as to self-incrimination. This is not um, the right time for that. No. Move to dismiss um, the case based on that because he made me give, you know, my ID. Um, yes, he can do that. But yep. I kind of, my memory was a little, it's a little, uh, I don't really remember exactly what we say. That's why I kind of need to question him to refresh the memory. Okay. But I do remember in general, though, he kind of, you know, I'm required to give my, my ID if I remember right, and I might have been arrested. You can, you can cross-examine him. Which is under threat and arrest. And even, even if he didn't say that, which I don't remember, which, like I said, I need to have his body cam and all that. Uh, um, I want that. I want to be able to review that. Okay. Um, now and also for the trial, if this goes to trial, okay, get discovery I want the in preparation video for trial. present as part of my due process right yeah. for the uh, evidence. Okay. Which is my due process. All of that's gonna, time. all of that's gonna happen. He's gonna have the right to call the police officer as a witness. He has the right to discovery as long as he makes a dis uh, timely discovery demand, which he may Probably not know happen. to do. Yeah. You know, Kurt, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't make a demand for discovery and shows up to court with absolutely nothing other than like the statement of charges because he doesn't know what he's doing. Do you say discovery demand? Yeah. <laughs> Don't you mean request? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and because um, like I said, it violates, it violates my self-incrimination. All right. That I'm being made okay. to give. Okay. Uh, I suppose. Uh, well, one more. Th one more thing. I, I, no. At the risk of. No. Okay. no. This is this is the thing that 
always befuddles my mind. Mm -hmm. From your perspective, what First Amendment right? What due process right? Because those things are contained in the U.S. Constitution. Yeah. So you are invoking the protection of the Constitution, the very thing that you reject. That's so right. how does that work? How? Uh, so I, as a judge, almost, I want to say what First Amendment? Because <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, I thought you said that the law didn't apply to you. How is this working in your own mind? None of this is real. You don't believe in any of this, but you want to invoke it to protect yourself. And yeah. I, I, I just have to quibble with him saying his right to self-incrimination. The right... <laughs> Yeah. You have a right against self incrimination I guess by by the extension of logic, you also have a right to incriminate yourself if you, you want. Do, in fact. Yeah, you do. but that's not what he's referring to. You're talking about your right against self-incrimination, which you are currently not exercising because you're making all of these statements on the record. Like I, I could see a clever prosecutor turning around the fact that on the record he said that he didn't remember the um interaction with the police officer and then saying an argument well he said he didn't remember the interaction so what the officer says should control because he's not a reliable witness so there's so many ways in which any prosecutor who's paying attention will use his words against him he's certainly exercising his right to self-incrimination right now <laughs> embarrassing <laughs> name government name anyways it ain't really my name but uh, a government name has been given uh -huh. um, what is your name then? You know, violate self-incrimination. And then it's used. As there we go again with the self-incrimination. <laughs> also, no, because to the extent they're using your ID, that doesn't count as self-incrimination. Self-incrimination only applies to content of the mind. Yes. Not, you know, your physical ID. So, mm -hmm. no. Yeah. And your ID is actually owned by a government entity. So. That too. Yeah. <laughs> again, to me, to prosecute. So it violates self-incrimination. Um, oh, so, honey. Uh, yeah. Move to dismiss based on that, too. What do you um, think the public defender is playing right now? Because he's definitely playing something on his phone. Um, and I just can't figure out. Look at him. He's look. He's definitely playing on something on his phone. Look at the light from the screen. Look at the way he's looking down. I'm um, with the public defender on this one. There's no need for me to be here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to play two dots on my phone for a yeah. while. <laughs> Among <laughs> us, maybe. <laughs> and like I said, if you need more evidence as to, like I said, his questions, then he needs to answer my question. I'm, I was about to send out interrogators to him. Um, I'm about to do it here soon. Um, if you Strictly find it speaking, necessary. I'm going to try. You, it ain't necessary. I'm going to send it out soon. So. Yeah. Thanks, Eric. That's great. Okay, that was helpful. Thank you. <laughs> oh, another thing. Um, now, Mrs. Washington, I just filed a federal civil Mrs. lawsuit Washington? on you. You mean Judge Washington? Uh, I'm going to give him a pass because at least it was somewhat respectful. So I'll give him a pass on that one. Oh, but listen to what he's about to tell her, though. Hold on. Now, Mrs. Washington, I just filed a federal civil lawsuit on you. Um, <laughs> For violating my respectfully, Mrs. Washington, I just sued you in federal court. <laughs> yeah, well, short of an injunction coming from the federal court, will which will absolutely not happen in every way. No, uh, I don't care. Yeah, for every she possible reason. Immune. Also, absolute immunity <laughs> yep. on top of everything. Yeah, she's immune. Nothing's plus happening in, to her. Plus, in in Ray Young, federal courts don't interfere with state judicial proceedings. Love that U.S. Supreme yes. Court. Yes, tell them. <laughs> Constitution rights during this case. So you may want to uh, consider recusing yourself. Um, I know you probably didn't get a receipt yet because I just sent it out like two days ago. No. So the court will be getting it if they didn't get it already. We can just week. No. And yeah, so I want that out. Okay. Motion's denied. Thanks. Thanks for pointing that out. <laughs> I see a motion to recuse that is denied. Nice. Yeah. 
And, you know, normally if this wasn't a ridiculous situation, um, <laughs> judges will seriously consider your motions to recuse them, them if there is some type of conflict of interest. There is no possibility that anything will happen to her as a result of anything he filed in federal court. And um, as long as she hasn't expressed any type of bias or anything like that, so he could just sue his way out of every single judge that sits in that county if he was able to just sue every single judge and then therefore get them to recuse himself. And so no one is going to, on review, say she should have recused herself based on this only. But how can he possibly file in federal court because he doesn't acknowledge their jurisdiction over it's, him in the first place? That's right. Because the, the, ver the, the very act... The very act of submitting the lawsuit is consenting to jurisdiction because you're the one asking for relief. So he does consent to jurisdiction. That's right. <laughs> that is such a good point. He is absolutely <laughs> consenting to jurisdiction right now when he's filing in the court system that he says has no jurisdiction over him. I yeah. love it. Based on what reasons? No. Conflict of interest might point be vaguely in the down. direction of everything. I that, but I thought you might kind of already figure that. But conflict of interest due to the lawsuit being filed. That's the no. grounds of uh, by demand for dismissal. Okie dokie. <laughs> ah, Hokey dokie. And I would like to. Uh, I'll interpret that as motion to die. Prosecutor, I'd like to notify you you know, of the crimes being committed against me by the police officer, by, in this case, um, writing the tickets, and I request you prosecute them for this, because I'm the crime victim here in reality. You know, because I was How's traveling that a crime? by right, which the U.S. Supreme Court said we have, as long as you're not carrying passengers, probably for profit. That's not, not quite what they said. Motor vehicle. Therefore, That's... all these charges no. are baseless. There's no case here. So, when, So in reality, I was harassed retaliated against for exercising my right to travel on my motorcycle. Oh, boy. You know? And then with these charges. Okay, so they had, they had no evidence that I was carrying passenger property for profit, which is what's required. That's the definition of a motor vehicle under 18 USC section 31 subsection 6 and 10. That's when a That's motor vehicle is a motor vehicle. In contrast to the state law, I know what the state law says. The state law just says, oh, if something's mechanically drawn, it's a motor vehicle. Well, that's the Kurt. How does it work? <laughs> okay, I without feel, wh without even stupid. without even without reading the statute, I am quite sure the statute is defining motor vehicle for some purpose for the that's relevant to that particular statute. It is not an omnibus thing that is defining motor vehicles for all purposes in all context. Second of all, even if it was. That would only be the definition as to federal law. Right. The state law could have its own definition. The only way they couldn't if it's, is if there's a constitutional issue. Right. So the federal government could have any definition it wants, and it still would be completely irrelevant to yeah. the state. So I don't care. So, yeah, awesome. True. And you're right. Your, your intuition is correct. I actually, in preparation for, like, a debate with some – very interesting sovereign citizen people read yeah. that statute that they like to refer to. And obviously it's federal law, but what it's, you know, normally wherever you are, you're usually in some state's territory and that applies to all vehicles. And the only way for the feds to preempt a traffic stop is if it's like a vehicle that meets certain types of requirements doing commercial business. And, you know, most of the times the state will still take over there, but that's the only time that they'll ever become involved. And that's what they're talking about. They're not saying that those are those other like your car is not a vehicle that you're using for personal use. They're just saying the only time that this statute federally applies to you is if you're like a CDL truck driver carrying a certain amount of stuff and then you get stopped and then you have like certain types of violations. Welcome to the stage, Artie's Corporate Fiction. Hey, Artie. Hello. How's it Hello, going? Hey, what's going on? How are nice you doing? Nice to see you. Nice to see you, my friend. Let me let Twitter know that we've got some heavy hitters with us tonight <laughs> and keep this one going. Have you seen this one before, Artie? Uh, I have not. I've been recommended it, but I have not seen it yet. So. Good. Super fun. I'm so excited. The state statute is in violation of this federal statute. Therefore, it's no. unconstitutional. No. That's not how that works. And therefore, no. it's the federal statute definition of motor vehicle applies here. It overrides the state statute under Article 6 of the U.S. Constitution, 
laws of the United States is supreme over state law. Oh so they recognize the U.S. Constitution. I wasn't doing anything wrong. I was traveling by right on my motorcycle, as I have a right to do, without a license, without registration, without insurance. Oh, so boy. I was all within my right under that federal statute and the U.S. Supreme Court case law uh, that uh, no. I cited already in the court that they sent back. But one of the main cases here is Packard versus. Back Isn't your five the minutes up, sir? Case law. So up. Okay, this is a little more specific than just saying people have a right to travel. It mentions here specifically. Uh, and I'm going to mention right here. Specifically? Um, <laughs> volume 44, Supreme Court Reporter. Can you be a little bit more specific? Oh, he's quoting, he's quoting a case. Okay, let's go. Yeah. Let's go. I'm so excited. Uh, and I'm going to mention right here. Um, Give me a pen site. Volume 44, Supreme Court Reporter, page 259. The streets belong to the public and are primarily for the use of the public in the ordinary way. They're used for the purposes of gain is special and extraordinary and generally at least may be prohibited or conditioned as the legislator deems proper. So as they're saying right there, so we do not need a license. As the legislature deems proper sounds using like something. For profit. Yeah. For sounds like a lot of room for the states to do whatever they want. Mm. <laughs> Artie, I know that you're really plugged into like the nuances of um, the law uh -huh. that surrounds sovereign citizens. <laughs> Can you give us a little bit of insight here what, from someone who actually one? knows this stuff from an academic standpoint? <laughs> what did he say again? I, I, I actually I'll missed it. the uh, the site. Yeah, I'll rewind I it. Yeah, the, the site. I'm gonna wait till he looks up. There we go. And the U.S. Supreme Court case law uh, that uh, I cited already in the court that they sent back, but one of the main cases here is Packard versus Banton U.S. Supreme Court case law. Okay, this is a little more specific that's actually than saying people have a right to travel. That's actually a new one to me. Uh, oh. And I'm going to mention right here. Um, volume 44, Supreme Court Reporter, page 259. The streets belong to the public and are primarily for the use of the public Ooh. in the ordinary way. Their use for the purposes of gain is special and extraordinary and generally at least may be prohibited or conditioned as the legislator deems proper. So as they're saying right there, so we do not need a license if we're not using the streets for profit, for gain. Um, I wasn't doing that. He, the police don't have no evidence of that. So he shouldn't even pull me over, stop and wrote a ticket, none of that. Ooh. So I'm the crime victim, I request you prosecute. The police don't have no evidence of that, and now he wants them to be prosecuted. Let me just take this back just a little bit. Sorry. <laughs> the, the police don't have no evidence of that. That's what he said, yeah. So he shouldn't even pull me over, stop and wrote a ticket. None of that. So I'm the crime victim. I request you prosecute him for that. And it's also a federal <laughs> crime, which I'm going to be contacting the FBI about. I already tried uh, once. I got to call him back. So, yes. <laughs> Yes, let's prosecute the police. <laughs> All right, so I've I've sped I've sped read the case, and this is coming out of New York in 1924. Oh, let's so do what, it. So what looks like what looks like happened is the state of New York passed some kind of law that gave preference to private drivers as opposed to those acting in commerce. So there's like some sort of law that says, hey, you know, ordinary people get the right to use the streets first. So the uh, company sued, and it went to the U.S. Supreme Court. And so they're basically saying, um, if the state determines the use of private streets for pri or that streets for private purpose in the usual and ordinary manner shall be preferred over common carriers for hire, there's nothing to prevent it. Okay. So they're simply saying the states have power to make preference for private drivers or not. That's all they're saying. So how does that help analysis. his argument? That it really doesn't. Argument. Okay. It, it really doesn't. Fun. That's what I suspected, but it, yeah. <laughs> it's like the opposite of what he wants. <laughs> yep. Anything else, Mr. Martin? <laughs> um. Um. Well, I'm gonna see if you got my. Uh, if you're gonna. I would like to just reiterate my uh, the demands for this missile already made, or if you want to call them motions, but like I said, I like using the word demand because I want to. Uh, I don't agree to no unlawful presumptions that 
you know, you know, because I understand the legalese a little bit where you say one word and it means something else and it's presumed. And that's why I demand also that there be no legalese used in, in no stages of this case. We can dumb this down if you like. Oh, <laughs> the, court system. the judge neither the judge nor anyone else has used legalese in speaking to him. They've spoken to him in very clear, plain English. And for those of you that don't know, legalese is just, uh, it's just a, it's just a term for uh, the technical speak of lawyers. It's not a real thing. It's not a language or anything like that, but it's, you know, when we talk about things in a more technical way, they call that legalese. I'm going to be finding a class action to stop this on a grand scale, but oh. I know what's happening. Oh, a class That's action. Why, like, for example, I use the word demand to use the word motion, and it can be presumed you're a defendant. Those defendants make motion, see? So. Okay, well. Oh. well <laughs> so I if see you, now. If you, I had never so knew call, this before. So if you call it a demand, it's not, you're not the defendant. Okay. That's new. Artie, is that one new for you? That one's new for me. I I know that they. I know I've I've heard gurus uh, tell people that you make demands and not motions. Mm -hmm. I've never heard of that being the why? reason why to do it. Oh, that I mean, is I think the like the presumption that you're a defendant. Usually, when the, the gurus that I recall, they usually say like they they say it. It says like no, that you are above them. Therefore, you uh, being above the 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 system, you make demands, uh, uh, not requests uh, of the mm -hmm. court. That that type of thing. Are you, you wishing know. your own writs of mandamus now? Is that what you're doing? <laughs> you know, it's funny. This sovereign citizen stuff is so ineffective, right? Like that every every so often I say, okay, I'm not going to be doing any more sovereign citizen videos because it's all the same. You know, it's like old stuff at this point. And then you wait about six months to a year and it's a new crop of them. And so <laughs> I don't know who these sovereign citizen gurus are, Artie, that keep convincing people to listen to them because it doesn't work. But Dang it, if they're not reliable and they don't always get a, a new school of people that listen to their nonsense. Yeah, it's I'm 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 a clandestine insider member of a couple of telegram groups with some of these gurus. And it, <gasps> are you, you don't know really? whether, Shut yeah. up. Tell us. Tell uh, us so, tell well, the biggest the biggest well i don't i wouldn't i don't know if he's the biggest but he's i would say he's probably among the biggest uh gurus is david lester straight mm -hmm. um he like he's one of the earliest gurus that i know that mixed um sovereign citizen with QAnon. so oh. he kind of did a, an amalgamation of the whole uh deep state cabal child that thing um oh. but he's been and he uh, has forefronted like the American state national, which is probably the most popular flavor of sovereign citizen that's been going on around here mm -hmm. where, you know, you, you try to renege your federal citizenship. You try to get like a passport saying that you're a, um, like a non-citizen national, even though that, that term is reserved for, uh, who is it? The, um, Green cards, American Samoa. Uh, oh like, yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so he he's probably the, the big one. Um, even though uh his wife, uh who was uh who's who's been in on this whole scheme, it's a husband and wife duo. She's currently serving five years. Um, because of a, oh my gosh, I used to I used to have this all put together. It, she was part of like a nasty divorce case, and she did her thing in the courts. There was like a constant. Uh, there's like a lot of appeals that went on. Mm -hmm. But then she violated, I think she violated the terms of probation and she got hooked up earlier this year. I think it was earlier this year. Yeah. And as a result, she's now serving her five years in Texas. Meanwhile, De Lester, a couple months ago, he got kicked out of his house for not uh, because I think the, the property they were staying in was actually um, part of the um, his wife's ex-husband's property. Like there was community property and it was awarded to him, but mm. they, but David and Bonnie had been living in that house ever since, not paying any rent, and apparently he got evicted a couple of months ago. So, but he this doesn't seem to be working for them. Ending up in prison, getting evicted. Um, you know, I've none of this I've dropped hints working. about that. 
Mm -hmm. I, I try to like drop hints like, hey guys, uh, you know, mm -hmm. if David's if David's paperwork can't get his own wife out of out of jail, I mean, what does that mean for us? And it, right. I'm very, I'm very <laughs> co uh, coy about it. I, it, I have a, I have a few people giving me thumbs up. I don't know if it's people who think like, you know, maybe he's got a point versus other. Yeah. But the problem the problem is, a good chunk of these people are so far in deep, like it's almost impossible to bring yeah. them out. Yeah. So that any kind of thing that happens to them, like yeah. David or Bonnie, it's like, oh, it's part of the, the system. They're, Everything they're like reinforces them. it. It reinforces yes, it. Exactly. Yeah. Like anything that ba bad that happens, it just proves the conspiracy. Well, exactly. guys, on that note, we hit a thousand viewers. It came down, it came up, it came down, it came up, but we're going to celebrate. Oh. <laughs> 1,000 viewers that we did hit. If you want to help us to stay over 1,000, please make sure that you like the video. That way more people will come along. Look, 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 1,003. All right, guys, you're amazing. Thank you so much. Let's keep this going. <laughs> and thank you to my um, amazing guests, which is Artie's Corporate Fiction and Uncivil Law. Please make sure that you go subscribe to them. Both ama amazing lawyers here on YouTube that provide amazing content. And you two guys also do some of that like video gaming content too, the both of you. So yeah, yeah I like that stuff. This is my husband's a gamer. So I have like a soft spot in my heart for gamers. <laughs> somebody, real, real quick, somebody in the chat mentioned like that it's uh, kind of like a cult and that's exactly what it is. Mm. Um, David Lester Stray has they created a cult. It's like a cult of personality with the vast majority of these gurus. Mm -hmm. But I think the worst of them, all, worst of all of them, real. I, I I promise I'll be quick. Is the queen the the queen of Canada? Um, She's a treat, man. I I love her stuff. It's good stuff. The queen of Canada. Yeah. Is she Romana, on YouTube? No, but a lot. There's a lot of people who follow her. Romana Dudulo. I. That's her actual name. I've. I've actually slipped and said something inappropriate about her name before, but her name is Didulo. And yeah, she's completely bat insane. And her, her, her members, her loyal, most loyal members are, in fact, they're just completely brainwashed. I and, love it. Yeah. I love it. This is so exciting. Okay, let's keep this going. I, I just, the fact that you've infiltrated and then them being like, QAnon adjacent doesn't surprise me at all, but it's just so fascinating to me. I love it. So that's why it should be no legalese used here. It's okay. Fraudulent. It's wrong. It's immoral. It's pathetic. Whoever made this stuff, you know. Oh, it's pathetic. Is that a legal term? Because it, it, whoever made this stuff will be the line, legislature. A blanket on a lot of people. The founding fathers. The <laughs> um. Um, something else. Now, when this proceeding started, I, I noticed on the screen, it said no recordings are, are allowed. Okay, now I object to that, in that that violates my due process right to preserve evidence, me or anyone else. And I'm not just speaking for I speak for everyone else. All the people have a right to record in any public court. This is all public. US no, said no, you have the no, no, right to record. No, in public, in the First Amendment. No, no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So judges have the right to set, you know, the rules for the court and every state has their own laws about recording in courtrooms and things like that. There you have the right to public access to court. So we could all go to any public trial or hearing and go sit in the courtroom. But the individual states get to decide whether or not they allow recording in the courtroom. So, like for example, state of Maryland does not allow audio or visual recording in the courtroom. We get courtroom artists, which is always fun, and reporters that will come and transcribe what happened. And you can get a copy of the transcript. And you can physically attend. Whereas other states, they make almost everything on video. But there's no blanket right. If your state has decided that you have to be in person, you have to be in person. And there's been Talk litigation on that. Go ahead. Talk to the feds about your ability to record in a courtroom. Exactly. Exactly. I'm. Yeah. I had. I don't. There's no recording in a federal courtroom. So that's my point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you might get. You might get taken down for something like that. <laughs> I've been in a federal courtroom. I find them very daunting. I don't think I would have the nerve to try to take out my phone and start recording.
and it's also a due process right to preserve evidence. That's what it the says if my rights are violated during these proceedings or any other, along with anyone else's, we have the right to record that and have that evidence to bring. Public like, defender here is watching his soul person. leave. So that's yes. why that's not supposed to be popping up on a screen that video audio recordings ain't allowed. So I feel like the public defender here just finished playing Among Us, and I, I think he's currently I watching. Gonna, <laughs> I was gonna say, I was gonna say, at this point, I probably would have booted up like yeah. uh, I don't know some Skyrim or 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 some Battlefield at this point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I feel like he's watching like a good HBO series right now. Like he's finished playing the game. Um, he was sus, you know, it was him. Yeah. And um, I think that now he is uh, watching Raised by Wolves on HBO because that's a good immersive show. So I think, look look at the concentration on his face. He is not listening to what the <laughs> <part is saying>. <laughs> <laughs> Right, thank you, sir. Miss, uh, Miss Duffy. Oh, I'm so ready for this. Excited. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, so I am aware of five items that have been filed by Mr. Martin, um, I think, after this case began to be pending in this court. Mm -hmm. And I'll just briefly address the, um, as to the formatting of those. I did notice all of them are handwritten. He does write a date on the top of each document, but then he usually signs off with a different date on the bottom of the document. So if, if it ever comes into play that there's an issue with the timing, with respect to deadlines or anything like that, for my purposes, I'm just going by the date that it was received by the court, which is usually a third uh, date that is different from the other two. Okay. So the first document I'm aware of is titled Demand for the Return of My Motorcycle. <laughs> that one uh, was received by the court July 27th. Do you, do you or, see or, what the yeah, public defender there just goes right nod? I'm, like, I'm sorry. Hey, I'm not going to really I missed see it. Hold on, because I was so busy laughing. <laughs> Demand for Return of My Motorcycle. Oh, you know, if your property is seized in a traffic stop, it's not until the case is over that you can normally get your stuff back. So good luck with that. Mm -hmm. Let me see what the public defender reacts here. Mr. Um, Bellinger, I just want you to know if you ever see this, I have solidarity with you. I can read your face. <laughs> I know exactly how you're feeling right now. Usually a third <laughs> update that is different from the other two. So the first document I'm aware of is titled Demand for the Return of My Motorcycle. That one uh, was received by the court July 27th, <laughs> or, or yes, I believe somewhere around there. I'm, I'm sorry, these, I'm not going to, really, the dates aren't really important, so I'm not going to. Oh, we lost Artie. Uh, just, uh, I'm just addressing these versus actually, I think, responding to them in detail. Um, defendants specifically ordered and demanded that the troopers from Michigan State Police uh, return his motorcycle in this case. That is a request of police that was filed with the court. No response appears to be required or called for from the people, so I don't have anything to say about that. Next is the motion. <clears throat> that was filed for the disqualification of the judge. I just want to take this piecemeal. There's no there's no need reason for a response. Why I mean, she's not the one that's holding his motorcycle the um law enforcement is, but let me see what she says. Defendants specifically ordered and demanded that the troopers from Michigan State Police uh return his motorcycle in this case. That is a request of police that was filed yes. with the court. No response appears to be required or called for from the people, so I don't have anything to say about that. Okay. Next is the motion <clears throat> that was filed for the disqualification of the judge in this case. Mm -hmm. And um, I just wanted to point out a couple of things. First and foremost, as Mr. Martin pointed out, the court rule that relates to disqualification of judges, MCR 2.003, um, speaks to the exact procedure for that. In a single judge court, and actually the challenge judge here is the chief judge, This, the challenge judge is the person who decides this motion. So I don't mm -hmm. have any argument to make as far as that, but I would point out, there is a quote included in that particular motion that challenges this court's jurisdiction. Um, and it cites a case from, what's that? Oh, yes. Penhallow versus Domes Administrators. That's a case from 1795. Oh. And yep. the specific quote that was cited in that case to challenge. What? Tell me the O, oh, Artie. No, no, no. She, 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 Wait she, for she her to say it. it. Okay. I, she, she, because it's perfect because I, okay. I have looked up this, people, they've, a lot of soft sits have looked this up and I've, yeah, let her, yeah, I'll let okay. her go. Let her do her thing. Let her cook. Yeah, let her do her <laughs> thing. Let her cook. <laughs> um, it's a paragraph or so. It begins with something about heavens. Let me see. I want to make sure I have it correctly. I don't really, it's not really important. In as much as every government is an artificial person, a creature of the mind only, 
all that stuff about artificial persons. I, I think Mr. Martin already um, made some references to that. I just want to make sure that Mr. Martin is aware that specific quote does not exist in that case whatsoever. That quote that he used to challenge this court's jurisdiction doesn't exist anywhere at all, oh. except for other cases where sovereign citizens have copied and pasted that non-existent case law, oh. and they've been told yep. the same by other courts. So, oh man, it's like a game yeah. of sovereign citizen telephone. <laughs> yep, the language doesn't you, exist. It does yeah. not exist at all anywhere. I actually was able to locate the actual freaking case um, through Lexis say anything, Plus, say anything and it's close? nothing, nothing, not even remotely close. Okay. <laughs> I love it. I love that they played this game of sovereign citizen telephone where someone said this case has this quote and then they've all been quoting that and some court has been like, the case doesn't say that. <laughs> and that's the only way that the quote comes up. That's great. I love it. It's <laughs> so embarrassing. <laughs> Apparently there's like a bank um, of things to be shared amongst people making this argument just so he knows and everybody else. Oh, knows. that does not exist. Oh, she, oh, she just took everybody down. The thing, the thing is, at the end of the day, the vast majority of Sov sets they all read from the same playbook. The yeah. gurus just simply they just they just uh, give their own spin on things and give their own flavor, add more flavor to the text. But it's all from the same playbook at the end of the day. Right. And she's just like, listen, I know that you guys all follow each other online. You all quote each other and all this foolishness. And you've been quoting this case and the case does not say that. I mean, and you know what? Law students can learn from that, too. And so can like new attorneys read the case you're citing, please. <laughs> I, I've, I've known lawyers, too. Yeah. Cases. Yeah. And, like read the case. I'm like, that's not really what they were saying. No, yeah. no. I was in an argument with a, with a prosecutor recently and she was just like, yeah, th this case has the holding of blah, blah, blah. And I was like, the case does not have that holding. It does not. That's been addressed in cases that came after that case that have clarified that that is not the holding of that case. Please be very careful with saying that. <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say on that. I'm just saying it does happen. Okay. Uh, that was that was such a takedown. It's not a thing. It's nowhere in that case. <laughs> that full text of that case can be Googled for free. You will not find that quote. The same is true of another case he cited, Keller versus Potomac Electric Power. That's from 1923. That case also oh, does not oh, include no. that quote, those words, or anything even slightly resembling that argument regarding the power he believes is lacking here due to m municipal court status. Oh. But FYI, um, the Michigan District Court Act of 1968 did abolish most of the municipal courts. Four of them are left that they did allow to remain. Gross Point, Gross Point Farms, Gross Point Park, and Gross Point Woods. All of those are in Wayne County. We're in Washtenaw. So just so that Mr. Martin is aware, this is not a municipal court. It's a district court. Finally, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. as to the motion to disqualify, as I mentioned, the court that you're quoting from doesn't even ex like the the law that you're trying to rely upon for municipal courts doesn't even exist in this county. It's been abolished. Look at the smile on her face. Let me take myself away. <laughs> and I just want you to forget about us. Look at the smile. <laughs> yeah. Look at the smile on her face. She's having a great day. <laughs> I, like the, I like that you're talking about courts that don't exist in These courts don't exist. Bro. This these words were never said. This is not a quote from the case. And um, all of your little friends need to go back and read the cases that you're citing. Yes. Might might want to try and get a refund. Yes. Because oh, what's but so special about Gloss Gross Point? What, what's their deal? <laughs> Why do they still have municipal? Yeah. Why are they so special? <laughs> to decide. But I might want to point out the manner in which he chooses to pursue that disqualification, including any comments or insults. For example, on page nine of his motion, when he says that also uh -oh. Washington was not, is not a real judge, but a clerk masquerading as a judge. <gasps> oh, that's so good. Okay. I'm offended by that. I'm offended by that. Uh, I'm offended by that. Okay. Because as an attorney, I cannot tell you how many times I've been challenged by somebody who's upset with the fact that either I'm beating them or I'm right about a certain point with you're not a real lawyer. 
And to say she's a clerk and not a real judge as she sits there in her judge's robe is so offensive. I hate it. I hate it. The disrespect. <laughs> that is not a good way to ingratiate yourself to the person mm -hmm. who's going to decide what happens in your case. Well, just out of raw hypothetical curiosity, if she is a clerk, that presumes that there is a judge to which she's a clerk to. So who would that be? Great question. Yeah. Why is she allowed to masquerade as a judge? <laughs> who, who, who is the judge? Do you know who it is? Can we find them? <laughs> yeah, and if you're if you think she's a clerk, then why are you even here? Why aren't you going in front of the actual judge that you think is a judge? Yeah, absolutely. Disqualification or recusal or even a federal lawsuit does not insulate you from the contempt powers of that very same court. Should Preach. you choose to continue escalating that type of behavior? Mm. That's just a, the more you know for me. Third. Yep. I'm just educating you. And I love him picking up his big old <laughs> sovereign citizen <laughs> Bi <laughs> book binder. of nonsense. <laughs> yeah, binder of foolishness. And oh, let me try to find a response to this in my sovereign citizen binder of foolishness. Good luck. There won't be anything there. Next document yeah. that was filed from this court is titled Martin versus Mike. Plaintiff's response and object. Pardon me. A response and objections to my return criminal complaint on Mike and the attached court letter that oh, be the police officer? unfairly stated filings does not comply with MCR 6.101 and 6.102. I didn't have an, a, a letter attached to that to refer to, but it looks like that is the court's rejection of an improper filing or format. Um, I honestly have no idea who Mike is, um, but the people of the state of Michigan are not listed as a party in that filing, so I don't really have any response to that either. I can advise, though, that um, Mr. Martin mentioned earlier and it stated here that the reference to this criminal complaint, um, because a defendant refers to himself as a plaintiff and um, titles something as a criminal complaint, it doesn't make either of those things true. So I'll direct Mr. Martin to the same court rule he actually cited in that filing, which is just because you say it doesn't mean it's true is one of my favorite sayings. So that was a very elegant way of her to say that. MCR 6.101. Just because you file it doesn't make it valid. Absolutely. Computer's approval or posting of security. A complaint may not be filed without a prosecutor's written approval endorsed on the complaint or attached to it or unless security for cost is filed with the court. I just wanted to disabuse him of that notion that because he creates a criminal uh, case, I guess in his mind yeah. and on paper, it doesn't mean that that exists in reality. If merely filing um, so something made it true, I'd be that, the best lawyer um, ever. Absolutely. true absolutely <laughs> i mean why would there be any um cases just file yeah. stuff and that yeah. immediately makes it true and that's it the court's rejection of an improper filing really isn't my business so no response from opposing counsel would apply to that the last two things that were filed before the court are two demands the court has already mentioned demand i'm so sorry it's a lot of talking happening here i gotta <laughs> refresh i'm two sorry demands. One I don't know her personally, but I know she knows she's eating right now. <laughs> like, <I know. laughs> like, she's being very humble, but I know that she knows she is eating him up right now. <laughs> and she's enjoying her. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting a little parched <clears throat> because I'm taking him down so hard. I need something to drink. <laughs> demand for default judgment. And another demand for summary judgment. Both of these, I would have the same reaction to. Um, the demand for summary judgment, summary disposition concerns parties to a civil action and defendant is referring to civil procedure, not criminal procedure. There is no summary anything of that notion in criminal matters. Now, um, he made some references to article three of the US constitution. Um, that pertains to federal courts, appointment, tenure, Supreme Court justices, federal circuit and district judges. Those are article three judges. Those are the ones nominated by the president, confirmed by the U.S. Senate. So this court is not controlled by Article Three of the U.S. Constitution. That's but facts. I think he knows that because he's citing Michigan court rules to um, sustain his argument for pretty much everything else. So that doesn't change here. Um, summary judgment is not a thing here. It's default judgment. Now, that's not quite the way it works. I think he argued that because the prosecutor in court did not respond to the request to return his motorcycle. And I just want to point out that sovereign citizens like to try to make criminal cases, civil cases a lot of times and use civil mechanisms to resolve their criminal cases. That's never going to work. They're not the same. They don't have the same motions. Some things overlap, but most things don't. So, yeah. Go for that first filing that I mentioned that he should have a default judgment 
and he should automatically get what he's demanding because he didn't respond to it. Well, I'm responding right now, but um, that's not how it works either. Again, this is kind of a civil issue. Um, there are cases where there are default judgments filed, but those are civil actions. We have traffic tickets that defendants fail to appear and get a default judgment. But if that were the case, I would have a default judgment of conviction for every criminal case where defendants fail to appear. Yes! <laughs> oh! That is so good! Yes! That is such a... Oh, no. oh my God, she is so smart. Absolutely. <laughs> If default judgments apply <laughs> to criminal cases, then every single time a defendant failed to appear for court, there would be a default automatic judgment. Guilty. They would be automatically guilty with no <laughs> trial or anything like that because that's what happens in civil. You just don't show up. And a lot of the times you can just get a default judgment. I, that is such a good point. Damn. <laughs> She's so smart. <laughs> well done. Good job time we don't just i don't get automatic default convictions so um again that's really not what's happening here so those are the five things that i'm aware of now finally if it were true that as mr martin stated that federal law trumps all state law and that all state law and state courts are unconstitutional the state court system would not exist <laughs> and the u.s supreme court would not hear cases resulting from the need to interpret state law yeah Mr. Martin has yet to hear, as all of us do, of state constitutions and the power of the state courts that come from those being abolished. So mm. his reference was correct that there are people in this system who don't know any better and don't know what they're doing. Mm. I don't think present company is excluded from that. <gasps> That's an old classy read. <laughs> He hid that Shaders. with all due respect. Would somebody else like to interpret? Because <laughs> I've really been running my mouth. Can somebody please interpret what she just said? Because that might have gone over his way over his head. But gosh, that was good. I mean, what do you? I mean, what else do you want to say? Like she completely roasted him in the most uh, civil manner possible, <laughs> yeah. and called him a freaking idiot. Yeah, uh, because genius if if it was true that all these courts are unconstitutional i i really doubt they'd be lasting for about 200 plus years now right it's like, <laughs> and there would be I, all I, the I, supreme court case law interpreting yeah. what the states mean in their state courts <laughs> it, it's amazing it hasn't come up yet it come up in a case in all these years at the u.s supreme court apparently no one has asked the u.s supreme court hey would you like to invalidate the entire uh, State system. <laughs> the entire, the every entire, single state judiciary. All, would you like to abolish the concept of state constitution, state courts, and state laws? And the Supreme Court didn't say, you know, that sounds like a fantastic idea because that's definitely what the constitution says. Like, which again, this this also, uh, uh, I'm sorry, this also highlights like the the how like fluid and um, at odds with each other some of these sovereign citizens' beliefs are because yes. a lot of the a good chunk of sovereign citizens they're anti federal government. Yes! Whereas this guy's making the case that there is a, nothing but the federal government, or nothing but the federal constitution, but a lot of uh, these American state nationals, they're anti-federal government. So, it, yeah, it goes to the confusion uh, with these guys. Absolutely, absolutely perfectly stated. That's such a good point. Continue without an attorney, you can, but I wouldn't recommend it. That's off on the PC. <laughs> oh! What did you want uh, what did, she, anyway. what did he just say? Well, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take something it back and I'll um, take, something. You're I'll, a prosecutor or something like that. Yeah. I'm surprised you wouldn't recommend you're a prosecutor. But. I'm not surprised you wouldn't recommend it. You're a prosecutor. So you recommending that I have an attorney is because you want to throw me under the bus and you want to convict me because that's your interest because you're a prosecutor. That is I, so. I, that is so not I true. I think that would make it harder, not easier. No, 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 no. Well, no, 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 no. What, what were the bar attorneys, including the public defender, are only out there for plea deals. And so they are working against your interest because they are also employed and paid for by the same uh, tyrannical structure. So see, that's what that I'm 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 translating for him. That's why yeah. he's like, you want me to have an attorney so you could force me to be in your system. 
But in real life, we know that her job is so much easier if he doesn't have an attorney and he argues from nonsense, <laughs> just complete and total nonsense. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's also goes down to this idea that a lawyer is just magical and can right. just can win every case. And mm -hmm. if it's that if it's that you're not winning every case, it must be that you're not a good lawyer or you must be a conspirator. Natalie, you must be in conspiracy with the state, right? You must be a bad lawyer. It's like, look, there's only so much I can do, right? Yeah. The reality, there's a reality that exists. And probably by your own actions, you have put yourself in a negative position. And my ability to deal with those facts and make those facts disappear is somewhat constrained by law, you know? So I can only do I so much. I can't, I can't just wave a magic wand and be like, we win. That's not right. at all how that works. Absolutely right. And and not for nothing, but, you know, defendants who have high-priced attorneys, they lose too because lose there's too. only so much you can do. Because, you know, we can't change as defense attorneys. We can't change the law. We can't change the facts of the case. And sometimes mm -hmm. the facts and or the law are not in your favor. <laughs> like sometimes you just committed the crime. And like the only thing that we can do is just keep it from being like a rubber stamp conviction. You know, <laughs> that doesn't mean that we're conspiring against you. <laughs> no. <sighs> uh, anyway. Anyway. Well I think that she said so much. I took some notes, but I couldn't take notes on everything. Hard to follow along with everything. So I think it's best to. Why do we have to hear you know, from Same with me, too. I say one thing. There was really nothing for him to respond to because all of his motions have already been denied. <laughs> mm -hmm. Her speech was more of an educational speech than it was a motion or a response to the court. His motions have oh. already been denied. So I guess we're just having a, 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 a conference instead of a hearing. Yeah. <laughs> allow her to respond back. She says one thing, then allow me to respond to one set of, you know what I mean? Like me saying a whole bunch, and then sure saying a whole bunch, because it's hard to follow along for both of us, I think. In one ear, not the other. At least me. Uh, and, and for both, I think it's common sense. But all right, well, so I'm going to respond now to the things I could follow along with. I just took some notes, but I could, I'm going to need her. To say again what I missed, and then I can respond one by one. Sir, no. Uh, okay. We're not doing that. How this is going to work, sir. Nope. <laughs> I understand here. You, you do. He really thinks, and a lot of sovereign citizens do, that they get to dictate the way in which the courtroom and the hearing is conducted. We're not mm -hmm. going to have her repeat her statements just because you were so busy, busy diddling in your notebook looking for your little sovereign citizen points that you weren't listening to what she actually said. Yep. I have the right to that. You you're you're not controlling this courtroom, sir. That's oh, tell him. Tell him. Uh, tell him. Um, okay, let's take a quick, quick break. Quick, quick break. I just want you guys to... I want you guys to know that 425 of you have voted on the poll. I know that some of you could not see it, but 12% of you thought that the writer, the 16-year-old girl who was babysitting when the parents failed to come home for three hours after her babysitting was supposed to be done and they didn't respond to her. 12% of you guys thought that she was the a-hole for calling the police. 84% of you thought that the parents were the a-hole for getting mad at her for calling the police on them for not coming home for three hours in addition to when she was supposed to be watching the kids and they didn't respond to her. And then 4% of you, my, my precious babies who are trolls like me, thought that the kids were the a-holes. <laughs> so let's just keep it going. Speaking about my, what I have a right to do. I have a right to respond back. Yeah, respond. So You're uh, going to get five minutes and I'm going to be done. So that is your opportunity. And after Put her on my clock. Get the literal room. clock and do a 24 stop. Yeah. Beep. Beep. Put your phone up. Beep. Beep. Oh, she, uh, she, she 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 is she getting it out? To that again, <laughs> being, uh, violates my due process right to the First Amendment. Um, no. Oh, my be God. Regulated by a certain time limit. No. My First Amendment right to no. say what I got to say. No. Based on an arbitrary, unfair time limit. Sir, in a minute, you're gonna you're pushing towards being in contempt of court. I know. You have five minutes. You can make your objection, which you've done. You have five minutes. Now, please move forward. Criminal. Okay, I want to object to that too, though, about what you said about contempt of court. Exercise this time is running. I would start counting it. No one's close to that, There's but. no First Amendment right in this courtroom, so That's you're right. a defendant. That's right. 
you need to actually do what is requested of you and I'm giving you an opportunity to make your argument. Uh, as to the criminal complaints, in response to what you said about the, that MCR, the, MC, uh, the re refusal to act on my criminal complaints that I filed because of MCR 6.101. And now, first of all, they violate my due process right, obviously, because they didn't mention a subdivision, a subsection of that rule. There's many subsections, okay? So I'm still left in the dark on what specific subdivision, subsection it is. And all those apply to specific fact situations. So that was the first due process violation right there, just mentioning that too vaguely general. Uh, number two, but assuming it was based on uh, not paying a fee or whatever, I think like she mentioned, or getting a prosecutor's approval. Okay, if it is for that reason, those reasons are unconstitutional and therefore it's invalid, that court rule. That's why I'm gonna file a class action actually on the court rule. And I'm gonna get that court rule and get up out of there because it's it's not legit. Class action on the court rule? Why it's not legit? Uh, not for nothing, but yeah. your your hypothetical class action would be filed in court. So I'm not <laughs> sure the court which established the rule would be amenable to overturning the rule because it's the court that would be judging its rule. So, yeah. I don't even know how you guys are interpreting what he's saying right now, because honestly, this part is, is a loss. I don't understand what he's trying to say. Anybody understand what he's trying to say? I don't understand what he's trying to say. Well, his very first thing was that he was saying it's a due process violation that they um, denied one of his uh, filings by citing only to a court rule, but not to the section and subsection of the court rule. They weren't specific enough in citing which court rule um, deems his filing like invalid or improper. That was his first argument that he made. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, that's that's BS because if, and, in fact, your filing violates the court rule, it doesn't... They, they can just say denied and not give you a reason why <laughs> if in fact then, it does violate the court rule. Okay, go ahead. Well, I, I know. I just, and then the second thing before the pause is that he wanted to file a class action yeah. uh, case against the, the, the rule itself. So, all right. <sighs> Good luck with that. When a, uh, when a class of people not be a person, so a class would be that's what's so like confusing uh, to me. wouldn't it be an artificial it would be a corporate fiction, probably corporate fiction legal, en legal so entity they could, they a as is above your head already the corporate fiction <laughs> the, lo the, the logic the logical inconsistencies grow as i desperately yeah. try to apply this in a logical filter i'm having problems <laughs> yeah like in i'm trying caps. to make sense of what he's trying to say in order for me to say like you know this is why this doesn't work and in this particular section I can't even make sense of what he's saying. All right, I'm going to put him back and start his timer back. <laughs> As I cited in there, I'm pretty sure I cited in there. If I didn't, I have to check my papers work, my paperwork. But uh, I'm pretty sure I cited in there. Judge is not playing games on her computer. But I'm going to say right now that it violates the court rule on I mean, the court, not the court rule, the Michigan Constitution part that says that... You recognize the Michigan Constitution? The right I thought they were all invalid. To, uh, Didn't you just say that earlier? Wait a second. He did. Wait a second. You said earlier that all the constitutions were invalid, but now you're citing the Michigan Constitution, which you say is invalid. Yep. Help. Didn't... <sighs> Make it make sense, right? It makes no sense. You're invoking oh, the protection yeah. of something that doesn't exist. Right, it's invalid, okay. it doesn't exist, but he's invoking it to protect himself. Yeah, protect funny him. how that works, huh? Um, but I mentioned in my paper, in, in some future paperwork anyways, I know that if I didn't do it on this one, in the very first one, because I didn't know, you know, what the hell subsection is talking about, they didn't mention it, but... I know did he just say, what the hell? Yeah, I think she did. He did, Both didn't he? We're both we're both thinking the same thing, man. So that's nice, I guess. <laughs> what <Yeah>. the hell? <laughs>
And, and the prosecutor has the best like shit eating grin, and I love it. Great. He does. I love. I love her. Oh, I mentioned it some later ones sent to the uh, sent to you guys, but anyway. So yeah, so it violates that right, and also, um, the U.S. Supreme Court case Murdoch versus Pennsylvania. Okay. And I got the volume number, page, and all that. I think I said to you guys before in the paperwork. It says that you cannot deny someone's uh, constitution rights. Uh, trying to make them pay money for something. Oh, the uh, rights no, are right. Know that one. Bringing some to the courts are right. Be heard. You have some insight on that one. Yeah, Murdoch versus Pennsylvania was the case involving um, uh, the ability to um, solicit, um, because uh, one of the like a local town had an ordinance in place where. Do you, in order for you to go like door to door and um solicit like put flyers on people's doors or something like that, mm -hmm. um they forced you that you had to it had to be you had uh to register um your business as well as you have to have a license to do it within the within the um within the municipality uh -huh. a business sued uh, a business or I don't know if it was a business or a non profit but they sued and the court said that. The, your ability to go, you know, door to door or what have you and, and solicit on a in a public fashion is a First Amendment right. You can't. In other words, you can't turn your free expression or free uh, expression into a regulated activity like that. Gated oh. communities are like a different thing. It's like a separate thing. But that's what Murdoch versus Pennsylvania was essentially all about. A lot of soft sits love to cite that when it comes to, oh, therefore, because I have the right to travel, you can't. Um, force me to register my vehicle or force me to have a license to travel because it's right. Therefore, I don't have to have a license to drive or have to register my vehicle. That's where they're well, that's where they're gleaning Murdoch versus Pennsylvania from. Well, no. strictly speaking, as to travel, he's correct. I mean, if you want to go walking, you know, True. you can go walk as one as you want with no right. costs and no no fees. You can walk on the public streets as much as you like. Um, I could but, I could literally walk out my door and swim across the river and be in Pennsylvania and um, you know nobody can really stop me. Yeah. Um except for the the elements. Um Nate but, the lawyers but here. It, but, but it's always about the me the mode of travel. The mode of travel isn't a fundamental right. You don't have a fundamental right to fly on an airplane, for example. That's right. Yeah, right, exactly. Everybody please welcome to the stage Nate the lawyer. Hey, hey. what's going on? It's the, been the a while. Team. Listen, yes, yes. I said this is the perfect video, okay? There is nothing political about this. It's just good old-fashioned, crazy, stupid, sovereign citizen nonsense. And I feel oh, like I, we I, all need this, Nate. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I just saw that. I was like, I got a random link. I was like, Natalie sent me a link to do it. I was like, all right, I'm not doing that. Now let me see what's going on. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> let me let the Twitter <laughs> people know that you're here. <laughs> uh, all right. How's the world together? Oh my God, sovereign citizen. So, so what's going on? We got sovereign citizen madness. That's what's we up? got sovereign citizen. This gentleman is in court, and he has a lot of pro se motions uh, to to get the judge off the case, to remove the case from this court. He sued the judge, and uh, the prosecutor just basically took him down and was like, "All of your motions are stupid." <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the judge has given him five more minutes to make his points. And now we're at the conclusion of his five more minutes, although we still have about probably 10, 12 more minutes left in the video. So I you came in at a great time. There's a lot of funny, great things being said. Let's let you catch up and, and uh, show you kind of some of the flavor of what he's doing here. All right. So hold on. Hold on. Before we go, mm -hmm. is the sovereign citizen the guy in the upper left hand corner? He is. Correct. The yeah, gentleman like down in the left, down right below him, is the public defender who's forced to be there as standby counsel. <laughs> we're, we're, we're trying to figure out what game he's playing while this hearing is going on. Oh, yeah. No. We, I, I was guessing among, among us at first, but we'll see. <laughs> Heard is a right. I'm going to have to pay money for that. Criminal or civil case. Okay, so it violates the due process. So all that's legitimate there illegitimate that is the arguments they're using for that supposed to be acting on regardless of a prosecutor's approval or not okay anyways now as to her her asking who's mike he was the he's the manager at area towing um oh uh, got it 
The shooter read it. Shooter. The, the towing company that stole that my vehicle. <laughs> oh, yeah. He also meant, made a motion to return his motorcycle that was seized when he was arrested. No, 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 not a motion, a demand. A demand. Oh, demand, a demand. A demand. That's right, that's right, that's right. <laughs> Nate, he doesn't make motions, he makes demands. <laughs> <laughs> Explain that. So, okay, anyways, as to the pen hollow, what she said about the quote about the pen hollow case. Okay. Oh, this will be good. Now, First, I want to say, regardless of the Penn Hollow case, what she said, um, the Declaration of Independence of 1776 <laughs> makes it clear the government has no <laughs> power over the people. They derive their power from the consent of the government anyways. That's something that's clear right in there. Okay? The consent of the government. I never consented. I never will. Mm. So, number two. I feel like that public defender just woke up. <laughs> but you keep, but you keep invoking, you keep invoking their their constitution. You keep invoking the United States Constitution. What do you mean you don't consent? Right. You keep invoking uh, it. You keep asking for this protection. What do you mean you don't consent? Right. Right. You're you're asking for this law, right, that you don't believe in to protect you, and yet on the other hand, you're saying, "But I don't consent to its usage against me." I only consent to its usage to help me. I'm, not, I'm pretty sure that's not how may that I, works. May I, the reason I just laughed is because I, I, I thought he was going to say something profound. But he's like, so about that Penn Hollow case that I, uh, I heard out has fake quotes in it. He's out. He's, I'm going to deflect not, it. I'm going to deflect and pivot the, cost, the, the Declaration of Independence. It makes it all irrelevant anyway. It's like it, I can imagine like a, an attorney trying to make that argument when they get completely like obliterated and the first thing they try to look uh, it's like imagine like the they're just like deflecting to a completely different thing to try and get themselves out of it Sorry. he better he better deflect <laughs> to something else because what he's been relying on so far is not working now first thing about the quote I was just recently going to the law library i'm going to need more time to respond to that oh no not the well, law library there's nothing um, in there for you sir oh I didn't have enough time to go over the pen hollow case, but if I remember it, I was just in the the law law school law library recently trying to write verify that quote. Because a lot of these quotes that I got, you know, that I'm citing in the court, some of them I have read and some of them I haven't. This pen hollow case. The prosecutor not in the law. Please, guys. It's so good. <laughs> She's like, okay, baby. That's like when you're in church and like you're stumbling through the Bible verse and your auntie is in the in the uh you know in the pews and she's like, that's right, baby. That's right. Get it out. Take your time now. Let Jesus use you. That's right. <laughs> that's how she's looking. <laughs> Look at the smile. <laughs> I love her. She's great. Pen hollow case, but if I remember it, I was just in the the law law school law library recently trying to write verify that quote. Because a lot of these quotes that I got, you know, that I'm citing in the court, mm -hmm. some of them I have read and some of them I haven't. This Penn Hollow case, um, I'm not sure on that. I admit that. Um, I have to double check myself because, you know, a lot of, mm -hmm. a lot of these I get online, um, YouTube, and a lot of them have been shown no. up to be legit because I go to the law library. No, he just quoted YouTube as a source in court. Oh. There's that self-report. Oh, Artie. It basically proves the prosecutor right in her soliloquy where she was like, I know that you guys all coordinate together, but the things that you're quoting are wrong. And he's like, well, but I went to the law library and um, on YouTube, that stuff seems to be pretty accurate. If you're quoting YouTube in court, you're in bad, bad shape. Unless you're quoting on civil law. Hey, yeah. <laughs> or Artie's corporate fiction, <laughs> or make the lawyer make sure that you subscribe to all of these fine legal minds. Yeah, if they would, if they would uh, not start subscribing from their guru gurus and start subscribing to this guru, <laughs> well, I would gurus, give them much better information. These gurus who would all tell you to get a lawyer who's licensed to practice in your jurisdiction and do not represent yourself and remain <laughs> silent. Please, God. <laughs> Quote. In the Penn Hollow case, if I vaguely remember, I think I did have a problem myself finding that quote, saying that exactly like that, but that's not saying it, it doesn't stand for that proposition. I'm sure it still does. I just got to 
go back to the law library and read it again. If I did read it, I kind of don't remember because you know I got a lot of stuff I'm doing. But uh, yeah. So bottom line, I gotta I gotta re uh check up on that case. Oh God. Um. So it'd be it, it'd be premature to rule on it yet. As for that penal case is illegitimate stand for that proposition. What? But I know U.S. Supreme Court cases still say it because it's all based off the Declaration of Independence. You know. What? And you know. So there should be no doubt on that. Okay. And U.S. Supreme Court cases exist that say that that Declaration of Independence is part of federal law, United States Supreme Court law, and it's the basis of the Constitution, so it's legit. That Yeah, the Declaration of Independence is legit, but it doesn't inform your traffic case here. <laughs> as of the proposition that uh, governments have no power over a human without our consent. All right, now, as to the summary judgment that she mentioned, Chapter 2 doesn't apply. That is not true because really since there's not a summary judgment in chapter six of the criminal look at rules, the public defender then I, I forget exactly where it mentions that but it's in the court rules or another law but i remember reading it it's been a while that they make it clear that where there's not you know where there's not a, a relevant or same similar um, proceeding in you know chapter six then chapter two is used for criminal cases so that just that just totally uh, it's not true. So the summary judgment it does apply in criminal cases. No, it no doesn't. Uh, uh, it's just he just is making these assertions and saying chapter two whatever summary judgment does not apply in criminal cases. It just it just does not. It's a civil mechanism, sir. Please, just because you want it to be that way doesn't mean that it's that way. You want it to be one way. But it's another way, and it's driving me crazy. Um, and regardless of that, in regards to the court rules, you got to remember court rules fall. The Constitution is the, oh, he's way out of time. The top dog, anyway. That's the top law, anyways. And due process rights to have some considered and, and ruled on and denied. In my case, I mean, just the case dismissed because based on my constitutional rights, that's just something I have a right to, anyways, under the Constitution, regardless of court rules. You know, because the court rules come at the Constitution anyways, and they don't always follow the Constitution. All right, five minutes are up. Thank you, Judge. Finally, huh? Mm. Oh. Made it. <laughs> got it. Great job, Judge. I didn't okay. think she was going to actually do it, but she did. God I got more to you. say, but... No. He said, I got more to say. I got to going. <laughs> I got more to say. He's not going to stop. Okay. She said five minutes are up, and he said, I don't care what you say. All right. <clears throat> well, I got more to say, but uh, so I, I'm going to move for an extension of time on that. Denied. Okay, my first amendment, right? Denied. So I got some more right. to say. It's not, I'm sorry. Mr. You want us to move for an extension, so I just want to be, are we selecting a jury next week or no? <laughs> Sounds like he wants to talk more. He does want to talk more. But I'm not adjourning it for that purpose. I am done with these motions. Ooh. The motion in this particular case to return the motorcycle has already been addressed through the court regarding the fact that um, he, the court doesn't do that. Um, any, he also filed lawsuits against individuals. Those were also rejected by this court as improper. And those, there's nothing to really address about that. It's already been decided. His motion to dismiss is denied. Despite his uh, understanding of the law, and I'm not certain which law school he went to, Ooh. summary disposition does not apply to uh, criminal cases and course, is yeah. denied. And same is true for a de default in criminal cases. That is also denied. That's right. Um, jurisdiction is with this court, as I've ruled before, and I will not be dress addressing this issue again. Um, the motion to dismiss is denied. There was one point that he did make with respect to due process that is going to compel where we go with this. He does not get to, to question officers except for in a trial. However, he is entitled to discovery. In Here we case. go. That's what and I he said. He mentioned that he did not receive um,
he probably didn't put in a demand for discovery. There is discovery that you receive without a demand, but the majority of discovery that you would want in preparation for trial, um, if they don't contain like witness statements, you have to ask for them ahead of time. So this, the judge could treat this as him asking for discovery here and then order the prosecution to turn over discovery to him. Um, a yeah, copy of the video, if there is a video or mm -hmm. if there's body cam, he's making a demand for that. Mm -hmm. And he is entitled to have a copy of any um, body cam that exists in this case right. and a copy of any police reports uh, that exist in this case. Sure. So uh, those matters need to, those items need to be turned over to the defendant so that he can properly prepare for any trial. Um, and trial right now is scheduled for one week. So I don't think it would give him a proper opportunity to prepare. I will remove this from the uh, trial docket for uh, this upcoming week to uh, give the, and there is one place in which criminal cases does have a demand. And that is a demand for discovery. So I think he is making that demand for discovery. And that is the court generously reading that uh, yeah. word soup, alphabet yeah. soup, right? As a demand oh. for discovery. <laughs> I, I appreciate the court going out of his way to try to make sure that he gets a fair proceeding despite himself. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I appreciate that too, yeah. Yeah, it's the, and we talked about that at the top. That's the right thing for the court to do, to be as generous as possible to pro se litigants so that their rights are preserved. Um, but you know, nothing he actually said was an actual demand for discovery. He did not actually file a demand for discovery and a bad minded judge would be completely within their rights to say, well, you haven't filed a demand for discovery. So we'll see you in trial next week. <laughs> you know, I, I know what law school he went to. He clearly went to Stanford. Oh, no, but, but Nancy. But I, I don't think she would do that because she could easily get overturned because he he does. Yeah. If, if he didn't get anything, then he couldn't prepare for trial. That that would be unfair. So you know, right. plus he's pro, he's essentially pro se. So he, he you want to at least protect the record on that. That's mm -hmm. true. You guys are so generous. And this is why I'm not a judge. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I, I mean, yeah, no, I, I, I kind of, I, I do. Uh, I yeah, I have to lean on that too. It's like because I, I have, I'm constantly torn. Between yeah. my, you know, screw this guy, <laughs> stop wasting everybody's time yeah. with your nonsense. But also at the same time, it's like we gotta, we gotta protect the record. We yeah. can't, we got to remain professional. This yeah. and that. So I'm, I'm constantly torn every time I see these things. Oh, um, someone says Stanford was a joke that went over my. What is an SBF joke? Oh well, um, yeah, well, as Sam, Sam Bankman Freed, you know, because of Stanford and his ties to Stanford and. Also, just other shenanigans at Stanford. I have a pretty low opinion of Stanford right now, so I was oh. I was insulting him by saying he went to Stanford. Oh, okay, no, some because someone is clearly you know they are a, a uncivil law follower and they knew exactly what you were talking about, and I was like, yeah. I don't. <laughs> is Bankman Free that uh, trial recently happened where they had like the courtroom drawings that were like super inaccurate? Yeah, the the crypto king with uh, his own mm -hmm. tokens and his own uh, yeah. crypto who stole. Uh, I think it was something like fifteen billion dollars, and uh, okay. just got sense. Yeah, so I didn't. No, I didn't follow that. that one. I didn't follow that one. I gotta. Yeah. When we're like not on here, I've got to ask you guys like what you guys think generally about crypto because I've always. But I'm always. I'm like a uh, get off my avoid. lawn. Avoid. Avoid. Yeah. Okay. Avoid. That's how I feel. Danger. Danger. And you're like danger. no. I, I'm like. I, I go ahead. Go ahead, Artie. I was gonna say well, it's it's it's, it's it, there has to be some sort of red flag when like. Two or three out of the top four um, crypto exchanges uh, have all either gone bankrupt and their heads have uh, been found guilty of various crimes. Yeah. So the only one, the only, the only one that that ex currently exists, I, I I dabble a tiny smidgen in the crypto. The only one that that exists that still exists is the original one that I've always known on is Coinbase. But all these other ones, Sam's uh, FTX. Uh, Binance dude just felt, was found guilty for various uh, financial crimes. It yeah, do, just yeah. stay away. It's uh, yeah okay. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that I'm not like alone <laughs> in that. But I always have to second guess myself because I really am a like yeah. that newfangled stuff scares me, and so I don't like it. <laughs> you know? Stanford Stanford Law was also the law school where the Fifth Circuit judge went to give a talk, and like the the rooms protested him. Right, the law school. The law school protested him for daring to be there because he's white man, and also where the dean of uh, 
you know, inclusion came into the room and protested the sitting Fifth Circuit judge from giving a talk at a law school. That was Stanford. Oh. So again, it was an <laughs> insult. Yeah, and just and just for some like context, my at my law school, there's been there were plenty of people that came and give gave talks who maybe uh, were conservative or they were um, liberal or they were on some type of extreme and maybe people didn't agree with them, but they were still allowed to speak. Like they still like heard them and what they had to say. So that is not really, I don't they, think that's the form. They heckled, they heckled the, they heckled the judge. It was great. It was a great moment. And, well, yeah. if they ever become lawyers, I hope they don't have to ever appear in front of that judge. Cause <laughs> okay, let's keep it moving. I am going to uh, require that the prosecutor provide him with that. Thank you, judge. Absolutely, Your Honor. I think the issue was the, the standby counsel and him rejecting representation. So normally this is brought up to the PD's office. But since I think it's been reaffirmed today that I, I'll i figure it out. We'll get it. We'll get it done somehow. Oh, OK. Mm -hmm. They've already sent the discovery, but they sent it to the public defender's office. But he is adamant that he wants to represent himself. So they'll have to send it to him now. Do you have an email or are you just going to, Mr. Martin, are you requesting to have the documentation sent to you via mail or email? How do you plan to receive it, sir? Um, first of all, I'd like to refer to me as Mr. I understand that's another one of the, uh, the term <laughs> Mr. Uh, for, I forget um, what it's called. Here all right. You, can, or you would like to figure it out um, to get him that documentation. And um, I'm going to give you a date. I would just send it to his home address. That's on record. Legalese term. That's that's the word I look for. The mister is a legalese term that's fraudulently assuming I'm a defendant and all that. But uh, anyway, so my... Uh, uh, those Ms. two Turner, things have uh, nothing to do ahead. with each other. Those two things have absolutely nothing to do with each other. I, I mean, that's just an incredibly stupid thing to say that mister is a legalese term. Please. Um. Your Honor, while you while you look for that date, I will just state on the record: um, if Mr. Martin, Eric Martin, living man, the individual sitting here before <laughs> me today speaking, if you would like discovery, I would highly suggest that you give the court an email address or some method by which we can deliver that discovery to you. Please because I'm not trying to there. keep it from you, but if you don't help me to help you, I can't get it to you either. I'm gonna give them my address, and I'd rather do it through my uh, physical address here. Put the home. That's fine. Send it um, to his physical address. Burn it on the CD. The term first, that's all. But before I forgot her, you know, you guys keep going on. And don't let me do I it. But we'll mail to you. Same address I, that's been. I've been sending the uh, the my demands to and all that my paperwork. Um, <laughs> the the public oh, whoa, 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 Yeah, I'm talking over because this is this is live. You don't oh. want everybody in the world to know your address. That's so. right. Well, I'm not worried about it, but okay. Well, okay. Yeah. Court's worried about it. We have the information. Mm. We can Please be worried about it, sir. <laughs> there are crazy people on the internet. Are you serious? True. Send over to Ms. McDuffie if Mr. Martin would so allow. But I don't have a problem with it, so, you know, you don't need to have a problem with my address. I don't care who hears my address. Right. Really? Oh, my oh, God. And Old Kitchen Gardner, being the uh, great person that they are, they made sure to <laughs> blur any of that out so we didn't hear his actual address. So nice. Oh, oh my goodness, guys, that was great. I really needed a video where no one died and no one was assaulted or abused because <laughs> the <laughs> oh my God. the law has been so heavy lately, guys. I haven't done one of these videos Bro. in like months. It's been too much, and like I was doing like the. Uh, Diddy lawsuit and I was going through the you know the facts that were alleged in the complaint mm. and guys I was just like at the end of reading it I was whether this is true or not because I have no idea I really wish I hadn't read that you know I just really wish Damn. and there's been a lot of that in the law recently so I'm very very happy for something where the you know the stakes are relatively low he's going to end up with like a traffic citation at the end of the day and no one's going to well, prison and no one died True, though. OK, so I don't know how it works in Michigan, um, but uh, but because of uh, because of, this is involving like a, a situation where his he, they took his motorcycle, took his vehicle mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in uh, New Jersey. We uh, we have a lot of the uh, the Moorish flavor of sovereign citizens in my oh, area yeah. in southern in southern Jersey. And as a matter of fact, in Burlington, which is 
pretty close to where I live. A guy got a guy, a Moorish guy, uh, got uh, his stuff uh, towed. He got his uh, stuff towed. Um, the, the 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 big the trifecta license, registration, insurance. That's the big trifecta these guys always get hooked up in. On New Jersey, if you don't have insurance, it's, it's an automatic tow. Mm. So, unfortunately, uh, the prosecutor who is no longer with the county, my understanding, um, he dismissed the case for mm. one reason or another. The mm -hmm. problem is, is that in order to get your car out of tow, you, it has to be registered and insured. And oh. it's been over a year now, and he still has not gotten his car back oh. because he refuses to get his thing registered. So there's oh. some a little bit of a little bit of justice there, in my opinion. For, and I bet for you he him. wants the car back too. Like he probably, really I bet really he wants his car, car back. Yeah, yeah. but he, uh, yeah. He's an, uh, you know, there's something there. Yeah. Those fees have got to be added up, too. Oh, yeah. the, oh the, the I, I can't imagine the, the yeah, fees. Kurt. Because, He's well, going to need to register not... insured and show up with $10,000. Yeah, it's going to uh, probably least... be more than the car is worth at this point. You should just buy a new car at this point. Yeah, just get a new <laughs> car. Yeah. I already, I, mean, I did. We had a, a more in court uh, this past week. They, we never get to represent them because they don't want us. But um, he was in the full regalia. He What is the little red hat called that you used to, What is it called? The Fez? The Fez, yeah. Yeah, he had the Fez. He had like a green cloak on. He looked great. By the way, he looked very, very dapper. And I was like, God, I, I wish I had time to like, go in court and see like what he has going on. But yeah, the sovereign citizens we get tend to be the Moors in, in the county that I work in. Yeah. But, well, right. at least it's not the UK from my understanding. In my understanding, if they, if you keep your car impounded long enough, they'll actually they'll junk your car Ooh. In, in the Ooh. UK. It's wild. I'm I, I didn't even... I thought it was... A, in the US, to be honest. I'm I thought like, it, after I thought, 90 days or something, they'll just... The, no, for them it's it's shorter than that. Either it's like thirty or sixty days. If oh you don't get God. your car back, they will actually crush it. It's oh wild. no, that's wild. No, they'll auction it here if they keep it for long yeah, enough. They'll auction. sell it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm gonna get into the super chats. If you would like to sign yourselves off, you're more than welcome to do that, or stay around because I know some. I saw some of the super chats. Some of them have questions for you guys. Uh, yeah. But I'll let you do that now. Anybody want to sign off? All right, we're going to the Super Chats. <laughs> All right. I like the bop and interludes. This like is good. Hey, whole transition for the Super Chats. I know, right? <laughs> well produced. I actually do. I actually, I, you, you. You didn't give me enough time. I was actually going to go, go? Uh, head out. But do your thanks. thing. I do your gotta thing, go. Artie. No problem. Tell everybody thanks where you. to find you. All right. I'm Artie of Artie's Corporate Fiction. You'll find me here on YouTube. Um, I My whole niche is Sovereign Citizen Crazy and uh, similar wild stuff like that. So check me out there. Thanks, guys. Uh, Hello, Artie. Thanks, I'm Natalie, you, for inviting I'm gonna me. You, I'm going to give you a lead to some crazy stuff. Look at the Dalton Mayor. Oh, I appreciate Mayor. it, Nick. Dalton Mayor. From and from Dalton. Illinois, because every time I say Illinois, because we say it with an S in the Northeast, they get mm -hmm. mad. The Dalton mayor, her name is Tiffany Hinyard. The story. Oh, I saw you did a video on that. She like went from the mayor to like being in trouble or something. No, she went yeah. from from stealing cars to being the mayor. She uh, is insane. Like the video I just did, literally got four hundred thousand views yesterday. But I saw this that. story oh. is blowing up. Her name is Tiffany Hinyard. I'm telling you, it is. It, it's an insane story. Uh, she opens up her um her city her meetings with Rihanna's bitch. Bitch better have my money. That's what she tells the city. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm I'm covering that too. We need to all get on that. That sounds fun. Right. <laughs> yeah, she's crazy. All right, all right. Thank all right. You, I'm, I'm down. All right, thank you. Thanks for the lead. Bye, I'll take right. her. Thanks for coming Bye. by. Um, so, uh, if you guys, uh, liked my transitions just for everyone out there in internet world, all of my transitions were done by, um, Valentina Nickel. Um, and I'll put her, uh, email, uh, in my description box and all of my videos are edited when I do the T caps, 
uh, by Devin, the editor, and her information will be in the um, description box as well. Uh, Nadi Aries gifted 10 Natalie Lawyer Chick memberships. Welcome to the Lawyer Chick list to all of our new members. And the KKF1015 has been a member for six months and says, hello, my friend. Glad to make a live at the start. I'm so glad that you could be here. Thank you so much. Debbie Blair has been a member for six months and says, proud to be here. I'm proud to have you, Debbie. Thank you. Um, Uncivil Law, amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much for the super chat. I'm telling you what, I don't, I don't know what you. it is, but whatever you got going on today, you look especially beautiful. Thank you. I really appreciate that. That's so sweet. <laughs> and yes, I did want company on the sh on the stream. So thank you. Thank you for getting that role. It's been a while since I've invited anybody because I'm always like, I don't know when I'm going to be streaming. I have no idea. It's just based I on what I'm, in, you know, like when I get out of court yeah. and when I get out of the gym and when I get home, I have no idea. So I don't want to like bother anybody in the middle of the night. <laughs> so I'm glad that this ended up working out. Thank you so much. Thank you to all of you. Alley Cat 1236, thank you for the super chat. Says, does Kurt still take clients? If so, in what state? I need a lawyer that knows the Constitution. Kurt? Um, I'm in Texas. Mm -hmm. And I, I mostly deal with appeals rather than trials mm -hmm. um, because trials are fact oriented and I like law oriented. Yeah. So, um, you know, if, you're in t if you need something in Texas, you can drop me a line. It's Kurt at Uncivil Law LLC. And uh, let me know a little bit about what's going on and I'll consider it. Mm -hmm. Pretty selective though. Mm -hmm. Do you do referrals? Do you I like refer out refer to other to. people? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. I do. A, I have a Facebook group of like lawyers in my state that I will like refer people to um, or like I'll reach out for referrals there. But a lot of times people will reach me here and say like, oh, can you represent me? And because I'm a public defender, no, <laughs> unless you're in my county and you're charged with a crime and you fill out the application at the office that I work at. No. And most of the times the people I represent are charged with like murder and stuff like that. So more than likely, I can't represent you. <laughs> so <laughs> I definitely feel you on that. Um, Jacqueline Hall has a super sticker. Thank you so much, my friend. Uh, Mike Dorado, thank you for the super chat, Mike. It's nice to see you again. Love seeing you two on together. That's me and Kurt, and I'm sure me and Artie and me and Nate. This is, this is a great panel. I hope the judge has a big stick. Kurt, your mic sounds great. It sounds amazing. I um, recently upgraded to the same mic you have, the yeah. SM7B. Yeah, it's and, a great uh, mic. it is a fantastic mic, and uh. I'm using a voice mod for StreamYard. I don't have any voice effects on. I just a neutral application, but it helps to refine the audio a little bit. On my OBS, I've got all these specialized plugins, have uh -huh. the audio like really dialed in. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 should, I should have bought this mic years ago. Me years too. ago. I've Me had it for too. like two weeks and I'm like, damn it. Yeah, Damn. no, I, I really should have as well. I just, uh, but I'm going to. And, uh, and, and I put an orange pop cuffer on it because it pleases me. <laughs> so I put an orange one on it. I'm going to ask you for tips on the, um, like how you make it better in StreamYard. I can't use OBS. I can't. I, I've, I used to stream with OBS, but it's very distracting to me. There's too many things happening in the background. It's, mm, yeah. I think it might be the better way to do it, but I'm not. I'm too easily distracted. Did you say something, Nate? I'm sorry. No, no, I agree with you. I, I, I think StreamYard is just, it's just a superior product when it comes to yeah. streaming. It's just yeah. you. It's just easier. Yeah. I just feel like OBS is for like, I mean, the super smart people that like are tech, you know, savvy and I'm just not one of them. Jared I have so Stark. much more control though. Yeah, see? So much more control. <laughs> Jared Stark has been a member for five months and says, all I want for Christmas is this guy's confidence. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, it's the people that actually know what they're doing that have like that imposter syndrome and people that know absolutely nothing that are so confident. And that's sovereign citizens. Dave the Pious, thank you for the super chat. We should get a cake for when we hit a thousand viewers. Um, you guys are more than welcome to send me cake any day of the week. Okay. Protein cake. I'm trying to be in the gym, but still, I love sweets. <laughs> the KKF 1015 says You should share your workouts with me. We can exchange workouts when we Oh, do. we should. I saw you posting you on should, um Yeah, you should you should text me when you're done with your workout. Text you when I'm done with my workout. Be good for encouragement. Absolutely. I think that's a great idea. Uh the KK I actually absolutely love an accountability partner. So I'm down with yeah. that. Um, I keep missing your lives because it starts during work or kids won't let me watch anything, but Blippi, <laughs> glad to finally catch this one from the start. Thank you so much. Say hi to your kids for me. Do not let your kids watch my stream, <laughs> but thank you so much. Facts or Fraud says, prosecutor is ready for her time. Yes, she was. And she was, she was great. She was great. 
Thank you, KKF1015, for another super chat. She's not just cooking. She's eating the whole damn meal and dessert. And I said the prosecutor was cooking in her soliloquy. She was amazing. Um, uh, Meso Carib gifted 10 more Natalie Lawyer Chick memberships. Thank you so much, Meso Carib. Hey, girl, I appreciate you. Welcome to the 10 new Natalie Lawyer Chick memberships. And River has been a member for eight months. Thank you. The Michigan Constitution is valid only when he wants. I don't think that's how that works. <laughs> That's how he thinks it is. <laughs> That's exactly right. Um, Maeve said, you should hear Judge Middleton in hearings with Sobsets. I have, and I should actually do another Judge Middleton reaction. Judge Middleton actually uh, shouted this channel out some, um, like last year sometime. Um, yeah, it was, in court, it was in court. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was talking about how like they wanted him to stop streaming and he figured it out that he was able to keep streaming. And he was like, I think some of the people that react to this, uh, to this um, courtroom are very good. Like Natalie. And he said my whole name, Natalie Whittingham Burrell. And I was like, Oh my God. And I also had, did you guys see the one where the, um, the defendant was actually in the house with the woman that he had the, that yeah, had. Yes, a I did. Yeah. Oh, I so that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did see that one. Yeah. So Debbie Reynolds was the prosecutor in that. And I actually had Debbie Reynolds on this channel and got to like interview her oh, wow. about like how she figured that out and everything. That was a great interaction. Um, I have Mike from law talk with Mike to thank for that, that hookup. He was very nice for that. Um, Meso Carib, thank you for the super chat. Butterfly in the sky. In the sky. <laughs> I can go I to can the Take a Take look. Take a look. It's in a, a book. book. A reading a rainbow. Reading rainbow. <laughs> the prosecutor definitely had a read for the defendant in this case. Oh, sweetie, no. Thank you for the super sticker. Um, UQOB, I'm going to say you, Cobb. <laughs> Thank you for the super sticker. Rihanna, nice to see you again, my friend. It's always funny to hear my name mentioned when people are talking about the singer. Also, tomorrow's my birthday, and this was a fun pre birthday live. Happy birthday, oh. Rihanna. Yeah, happy Hello. birthday, Rihanna. Happy birthday. Catatonic says, love your channel, Natalie. Fun and learn a bit too. Thank you so much, Catatonic. I appreciate the super chat. And E. Koala T gifted five Natalie Lawyer Chick memberships. Thank you so much, E. Koala T. And Dave the Pious, I feel like when I read your super chat, I just read the super chat and didn't say your name. So thank you very much, Dave the Pious, for the super chat. Thank you to everyone who came out tonight. Please make sure that you like the video on the way out. Thank you for continuing to support this channel, please make sure that you subscribe to our amazing guests. Tonight's guests were Uncivil Law, Nate the Lawyer, and Artie's Corporate Fiction. I'll see you guys all later. Hit the like button on the way out, and I'll talk to you later. Bye! I'm waving from behind the... <laughs>